All right, so we're going to go through our race order tonight. Of course, we've got uh, TQ Midgets, A versus F. Then we go to B versus E. C versus D. Then we go back to our production saloons. Of course, sprint cars are uh, here as well. And of course, we've got Jody Scott up here in the commentary box as well. Jody, hello, welcome. G'day, g'day Dan. How you going, mate? Yeah, good. Hot day today. Oh, she's been uh, hot and um, she's been pretty busy on the uh, road out there too. The traffic's actually bumper to bumper. It's sort of like the Auckland Expressway most of the day, so she's been pretty hectic, but everyone's got here and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, all right. So just going through our race, of course, production saloons, the Pab Nixon Memorial tonight. Sprint cars, got two heats of that, of course, the Paddy North Memorial. We've got stock cars, quarter midgets running the uh, Mike Greer Hove Sudden Southern Series, and then we go back to another TQ Midget Heat, A versus E, B versus D, and then we go back to C versus F, Production Saloons, Stock Cars, Quarter Midgets, another TQ, A versus D for Heat number three, and then I'd be, I'd say, some more TQ races, yep, we've got TQs, B versus C, E versus F, Quarter Midget feature seven laps, then of course our stock cars are out there on the track. The sprint cars of course, 23 laps for Paddy North and then another 23 laps for Paddy North. Welcome to the top of the South Speedway here in beautiful Nelson for the Amber Court New Zealand TQ Championship. Already we've seen hot laps for the practice for all the drivers, 48 of the top drivers in New Zealand here. Here's one of them, 2NZ Caden Barker. What did you think of the track? Oh, she's definitely different. Um, we came down here a couple of times this year already, um, and every time we've been, it's just kind of thrown, thrown a curveball at us. We've had slick tracks, we've had hooked up tracks, um, and tonight it's really proved that it's going to be quite a slick one by the looks of it. Do you think the local drivers are going to come to the fore early on? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think I was more expecting that track to come a bit later on in the night, um, but seeing it's here quite early, I think the locals will be on it from the get-go. You had a brilliant championship run at the Miani staged event something like only seven or eight months ago. It's been a short time as 2NZ. Yeah, um, lucky with a bit of luck there. Um, managed to sneak through from, I think, we started eighth and kind of just sat around the, the top five and then caught a few lucky breaks and uh, managed to put on the podium. So it was pretty wrapped. Let's go back to that track, though, with the sprint cars here tonight as well for the Paddy North Memorial. I think the track is going to go black pretty much up to about three feet off the fence. It could be a tall gearing for later on. Yeah, I think we might be looking to have a um, sprocket change, but um, obviously I just want to get the first one out of the way and make sure that everything's all good. I know the preparation will be there, but how are the nerves? Oh, I won't tell a lie, I've been nervous since Tuesday. Um, I think it's um, gotten to me a little bit this time and I'm just trying to put myself through the paces and calm myself down before we get into it. What would it mean to you to put a 1NZ on the side of that car, especially as you're heading over to Tulsa for a week of racing over there Christmas Eve? Oh, it'd definitely be special, you know. My family's not, not really from the Speedway background, they're more from the rallying background, but um, we've kind of gelled well together and it's just a small family team. I've got some awesome sponsors um, with the likes of online stabilizers. Um, but yeah, my papa passed recently and that was always his goal to be um, here to see me be at the top. So yeah, really going to try to get it for him. Definitely be a great reason. What was the reason for you for transitioning into Speedway rather than rallying? Um, so my, my uncle got my, co my two cousins, or my older cousins, sorry, into a mini stock um, and then I was lucky enough to get a drive and from there Papa was like, this is the road we're going to take and I was all for it, so yeah. Right, I know you're going to give it everything on the track tonight. You got one of the letterbox cars, so as we say, you're going to send it. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Thank you, mate. Righty, we're here with a 52N of John T. Austin, one of the hometown hero boys. What do you reckon, New Zealand three-quarter midget championship here in your backyard? I mean, it's great to be here. Like, um, we do love to travel, but having the title here, there's there's nothing better than racing at home and having a chance to uh, support your uh, let our sponsors get that real um, real exposure uh, with all these other travelling guys coming down. Leading up to the New Zealand Championship, what has your run sort of been like leading up to this point? Uh, we've had some bad luck, some good stuff. Uh, we got a podium in Blenheim um, in one meeting, but other than that, here we've we've been. Uh, Caught with a few problems, um, even right now, trying to fix the car for the first race. Um, still going, so fingers crossed we can get out, but um, we hope we got it sorted, um, but time will tell. How are the nerves heading into this weekend? Um, they're up there a bit. Um, I think the last two titles I've been to, they were a lot better because I just knew tracks to me and um, 
completely unknown whereas here it's like I sort of expect some sort of results from myself um, but again it's all about luck really when it comes to the end of it so finish races get points and hopefully we're up there and just try and make that feature race for the tomorrow night for sure for sure and obviously sponsors on the car you want to thank uh, yeah, uh, Bid Food Nelson, um, they're great to us, our main sponsor, and then we've got all ours, so Super Liquor Richmond, uh, Car Company Automotive, Bartercard New Zealand, 306 Motel on Rickerton, Buller Bridge Motel, uh, and my dad, Todd Austin. Alrighty, c c uh, good luck for tonight. Cheers. Well, this time we've got a former national champion, although it was back in 2012-13 at Western Springs, 17G Dylan McGregor hunting for another crown. Yeah, that's what we've come down to do, just come down and give it our best shot and hopefully we come away with a good result. Hitting form right at the correct time as well last week at Miani taking a heat race and the all-important feature. Yeah, we went down there and um, yeah, we were real happy with what we got. Um, you know, there was some good competition and managed to come away with the feature win, so definitely good momentum coming into this. But uh, we, again, we just got to take this championship one race at a time. You had some time out of the sport, but the, the hunger was still there. You came back, you started back up slowly, but you seem to be getting back to where Dylan McGregor should be. <laughs> yeah, we, we are finding momentum. We, we, in the time off, we built our own car, and um, we're slowly getting to grips with it and think that we've actually got a couple of key bits up our sleeve to, that should suit this track and coming off a little bit of confidence in that respect with the car. TQ racing has changed a lot since you won a national crown. Oh man, yeah, you, if you're not on the gas the whole way then you, you're not going to be winning anything. So it's a huge momentum game, Car, every car is super fast um, and it's def, you're definitely going to be on your A game every lap. Got a lot of young ex mini stock kids who don't pay the bills. I think that's why the racing's like that. Um, like you say, they don't have to pay the bills, they got, they're super momentum drivers. And, you know, young, fit, uh, very hard to keep up with. It's good to see the resurgence of TQ Racing at Gisborne as well. Yeah, we're, we're real lucky. We're actually getting, it, like you say, it's coming back. We're, you know, seven to ten cars in Gisborne now, I think. So, uh, with the prospect of a couple of guys buying some. So, hopefully we're going to, you know, come back with a good 15 or so local cars in the next year or so. Brilliant. you got some good sponsors backing you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely wouldn't be out, out here without them. Um, we've got um, Kuru Contracting, who's been backing us for a few years now, and he's been a, you know, Ricky Kuru and Lee and Kuru have been in the sport for a long time with the stock cars and mini stocks, and, um, you know, uh, very passionate about Speedway, so we're very lucky they're backing us. Um, we also got uh, Link Up Paint Supplies, who again backs a lot of people and has given us support over the years, which is which is great. Um, James Andre who owns Jet Wash uh, in Fittianga. He's the guy we actually built the car with, and it just puts endless amount of hours into it. And um, yeah, I couldn't thank him enough. And you know, also my, my pit crew they come all the way from Gisborne and um, they're with me every every meeting and. The hours they put in the workshop and, and at, you know, at the track. Uh, also like that, um, I've also got my partner at home who's always on the social media keeping people up to date, which is real cool. Um, that's beyond my expertise, so that, that's her role and she, she does wonderful with that, so thank you very much. Well, you told me before this interview that you didn't really know what to say when you are interviewed. I think you did a really good job of it, but hey, good luck tonight. You never know, it'd be nice to put that 1NZ back on that car. Oh, I'd love to, yeah, thank you very much. Righty, we're here with the 18K multiple time New Zealand mini sprint champion. Sean Cook made the way all the way over to TQ Midgets. How'd that one come about? Uh, we sort of started developing a little bit towards the end of uh, when Dylan was born and um, to obviously progress him into the sport. Uh, and that was obviously to run out of Western Springs, which and we had the opportunity to run a TQ through Harris Race Cars. So we ended up doing that. And then uh, now 17 years later, um, Dylan's racing with us as well, and we're a two-car team. So. Obviously a long way to travel all the way from Kahiki to get down to Nelson. You have had a couple runs here throughout the season. How have they gone so far? Uh, yeah, we've been pretty happy with our pre-season uh, work down here. It takes a bit of effort to, to get down here. She's a 14-hour trip from, uh, from Kiki. Um, but no, we've had some good results. The car speed's fast. Dylan's been doing the setups uh, while we've been getting his car ready. And now we're down here to uh, obviously do what we can do to uh, get a title. Just try and keep it clean and stay on all fours for all five races and should make that... Uh, feature race come tomorrow night? 
Uh, it's definitely a competitive class for sure. Um, and like Dylan said earlier, that uh, if you're not on the pace, you, you, you're not going anywhere. You're going backwards. So, um, yep, like you say, four wheels. That's how it's going to win a title. And yeah, hopefully we're at the front. Obviously, got a, quite a few sponsors on the car. You want to thank? Uh, yeah, I got to thank Gerard Roofs, um, uh, Masons Underlay. They're uh, they're a big supporter that's come on board this year, and uh, obviously Cook Roofing and uh, Waikato Safety Nets. Alrighty, con oh, good luck for tonight, eh? Hey, thanks, thanks a lot. The sprint cars are coming out for their time trial. The 15 C car coming out. That's Steve Duff Jr. Of course, Jamie Duff, our South Island champion. Just having a wee look for him. He's not out there. Oh, yes, he is. The big red machine as well is out there. So watch for these guys. Of course, we just sent him around for a couple of laps each. Fastest one to separate them into two different groups. They've both got two groups. And then we've got the races later on. And I think they've actually split the two races up from back to back. Uh, so these guys can actually refuel. Because uh, we were down in Christchurch last weekend. We had a 25 laps modified feature. And uh, Pro Cars had to stop there for a wee bit with a few incidents. Just to keep the, the old fuel going. But no, mate, she's a small, tight track here, and I'm sure they'll get plenty of laps in it tonight. Watch for the sixth car, of course, Alicia Hill. She is doing double duty. We just talked to uh, Joe, who's the uh, mother-in-law. We said, look, she, Alicia's been doing the F45 for quite a few months now, and she's getting into it. I said, with well, double duty, she'll be going up to F90. So she'll be absolutely flat out. This is the big one for her, both in the sprint car, which is good to race, and, of course, the TQ later on. So watch for the sixth car. So she's fired up, the green light's on. First lap, under pace. And she fires round, down the back straight she goes. Of course, Jack's tyres down there on Three Brothers Corner. Big roundabout. Great to see them shooting through as we're just trying to bring up a lap time here. And it is a 12.81, so already into the 12 seconds. Oh, and she fires down. So she'll call down. Here we go, the 46, Joel Myers Jr. Young American, 60-odd races in America, just come through. Started in Christchurch last weekend, won the feature race. First round of the Hydrolink War of the Wings. And up, back up here in the Nelson. And does what he does in natural talents Ooh. is Joe Miles. As he brushes the wall, <laughs> around he goes, and he's got a 12.75. So just having a look at that one there, Alicia Hill's pip Joel Myers. As you see, the second race, let's just have a look. Why oh, there we go, 12.43. So he's gone 0.2 of a second underneath Alicia's time. Here we go, Jamie Duff on his warm-up lap. Current South Island champion, former New Zealand champion. He's going to brush that wall. Looks like they're quite happy to race the high line at the moment. Gonna flick that clay up as they go through. And looking at Jamie Duff, 12.74 for his lap. Here comes his second one. Comes through. And gets a 12.56 for his second lap. So all these guys doing their fast times on their second lap. Here we go, Yulenburg, 28k. As he fires it around a regular visitor here to the Nelson Speedway track, just cuts it a little bit low. He's gonna find the pace around the Bixies Hill. He's going to run the high line as well, just gets it through there. Power's on. Around he goes a 13.85 on his first one. As he comes around for his second one. Just gets it tidy this time round. And his quick time will go to a 13.29. There we go, young Corey McQuillan out of Canterbury. Contracted to Nelson. His uh, second full season, I think, in the sprint cars. Did race the saloon car for a wee while. As he fires around, Dad's racing the production saloon. Great to see the young fella piling it on. 12.54 on his first one as he comes around for his second one. And can he get lower than 12.54? He might be right here. Let's see if he can pick the top spot. And no, his first one was a bit quicker, the 12.54 was his quick one. So all chasing the young American. There's a 77 of a Dodge. Heads around. Down the back straight he goes. Round three and four. Takes about three quarters of the racetrack. Up top, tries to find that bike line. Get that big rear tyre powered down. 
And his first one was a 12.62, so he's on track. Can he keep the power up? Shoot through. And it's a 12.48. Very quick time, that one. That's uh, just under. Uh, so just over Joe Miles, Myers, Cart. Well, oh, here we go. Caleb Bourne from Christchurch. Former War of the Wings champion. Fired in. Of course, Dad Ray Crowley not looking on. Here we go. Just gets a little bit loose out of one and two. And the first one was a 12.94. The second one coming through now. And the second one is a 12.79. As we see the Nelsonian under the Dalton sponsorship. It is kind of rangy. Great to see him back at his home track. As he fires it around. Beautiful prepared machine. He's got some uh, merchandise to give away in the pits. Going to go and grab a, a miniature wing and some t-shirts. His first one around is a 12.5, so he's not far off the pace. As he fires round three and four, can he get under that one again? We'll have a look. Oh, there we go, 12.39. He shoots to the top of the table. Does Connor Rangi. And here we go, the 15 car of Duff Jr., Steve Duff Jr. Down the back straight he goes. Takes that high line, just gets those wheels up a little bit. The front inside left tyre just there for presentation as he gets a little bit tight towards the wall. It's just going to button off a bit. Probably not quite done his second run. His first one will be the main one. And his quickest time will be a 13.2. Right out, here we go. The 79 car all the way from Tauranga, the Big Bay Park. This track probably about half size of what Bay Park is on the big big straights up there. Certainly a lot tighter, but he's certainly handling it very well as Max Hilford. As we try and get his lap time, so it is in the 12s. Around he goes. And the screen just stopping to see what he's done. Let's have a look now on that one there. And Max Gilford has picked up a 12.86, uh, sorry, 12.87 for Max Gilford. Right here, here we go, the 75. Young American, Brenham Crouch. First time on the Nelson track. He's gonna get it nice and wide, just brushing the turns three and four. Fires it down the back straight, puts the horsepower down, the TNL sponsored machine. Valvoline on the wing, around he goes, MTF Finance vouchers as well, shoots it through, and his first one's a 12.96, and in fact it'll be a second one, 12.96 the quick one, so it is under 13 seconds, so pretty much everyone, fast Chief Duff Jr. under the 13 second mark, that is our time trials, that'll split them up into groups. <laughs> Uh, wholesale tyres in Fakatane. Need truck tyres? Wholesale tyres. Good tyres, better prices, great people. Technical Welding Services Hamilton are specialists in the transit concrete mixer industry. From chassis drop off to a full working concrete mixing, the team will take care of the job from start to finish. Full engineering services and general sheet metal work can also be undertaken. Need a quote? Call 07 847 20 
or visit our website www.techwow.nz. Technical Welding Services Hamilton, we are the experts. Got some grids coming up. Yep. So the grids go. won't be too far away. Just there have a are. look as they grid up. Right out. Here we go. Off uh, position number one will be the 6B of Tyler, former New Zealand champion. Off uh, position two is the 36C of Bailey. Here we go back to the defending champion on grid number three. It is Aaron Humble. Here we go back to position number four is the 4B of Dudding. Grid number five is the 17G of McGregor. The 12N of Graham Porter is grid six. Grid number seven is the 7N of Morgan Frost. Ryan Baker at the 15A on grid eight. And grid nine is the 47C of Morris. The 52N of Jonty Austin, position 10. And position 11, the 91C of Ethan Smith, former quarter midget driver. Position 12, the 97C of Seoul from Christchurch. Position 13, the 18, young Jack Rawson from Nelson. The 99 of Mark Bazette from Nelson as well. And off the back, it is Jamie Booth, the 46C from Christchurch. That is our grid for this first heat of the Kit TQs. And of course, that is the Rod Grill group and of course the Lee Marquet group that's up there, group A and group F. Rightio, they're gridding up, they're just checking the track surface there. We've got uh, the one ends here just putting a bit of tape on the side there, I think that sun is just getting into his visor a little bit coming around turns three and four so bit of fast tape on that one, we see that with the uh, Super Stocks and Palmers North teams every now and then with the old sun coming down just at the wrong time. Okay. So here we go, about ready to get underway, Amber Court Motel, New Zealand TQ title, underway, and oh, we've got wheels up already, the 91 car gets his wheels up, here comes the 1NZ of Aaron Humble, down the back straight they go, it's the 6B of Dwayne Todd leading this one from the 1NZ of Aaron Humble, then we go back to the 36 car of Scott Bailey as they all fire into turns 3 and 4, but it's Dwayne Todd in the 6B car, Leading this one out from the 1NZ of Aaron Humble from the 36 of Bailey. Here comes Humble side by side with a six car of Dwayne Todd as they work their way through. Passes here at the tower. The 1NZ is about to go in front. He takes over the lead. Oh, contact already. John D. Austin's in the infield, so a DNF already for him. Not a good start. But the 1NZ starting where he left off in the race lead from the six car of Dwayne Todd. Then we go back to the 36 car of Scott Bailey. Then we go back. Then go back to the uh, 17 car. Looks like it's going to be one of our Ports Bay cars. But it's Aaron Humble leading this one out from the 6B of Dwayne Todd. Then we go back to Scott Bailey as they work their way through. It's still Aaron Humble leading this one out. We're on lap 4 or 12, so not quite half distance yet. As they work their way through, it's still the 1NZ of Aaron Humble leading this one out. As they work their way down the back straight, the 6B of Dwayne Todd. Here comes Morgan Frost having a wee battle with Barker in the 15, but it's the 1NZ of Aaron Humble from Dwayne Todd. Scott Bailey, Dylan McGregor, Ryan Barker, Morgan Frost, Ethan Smith, Bart Dunning, Jess Morris and Cameron Sol, your top 10 at the moment. But here he comes, the one in Z of Aaron Humble, leading this one out from the six of Dwayne Todd. Then we go back to the 36 of Scott Bailey. Then we go back to Dylan McGregor out of Gisborne. So they work their way into turns three and four now. It's still Aaron Humble. We're on lap eight or 12, so four more laps to run in this one. Humble's running away with this. Dwayne Todd's gonna have a weak battle on his hands with Scott Bailey. Ryan Barker's got Morgan Frost all over the back of him. But the one in Z of Aaron Humble at the moment in control of this one from the 6B of Dwayne Todd. Morgan Frost all over the back of the uh, 15A of Ryan Barker. He'll be wanting that white flag very shortly. But it's the one in Z of Aaron Humble. With three more laps to go. Starting his title defence how he would like it. It's the 6B of Dwayne Todd from the 36 of Scott Bailey. Then we go back to Dylan McGregor, but a lap traffic may come up from Graham Porter in the 12. White flag out, one more lap to run. Here he comes, a one in set of Aaron Humble. Starting where he left off, defending champion, picks up heat one win from the 6B of Dwayne Todd. Then we go back to the 36 of Scott Bailey. Digham, Dylan McGregor, Ryan Barker, Morgan Frost, Ethan Smith, Bart Dunning, Jess Morris and Cameron Sol, your top 10 in heat number one of the New Zealand three-quarter midget title.
Not a lot of positional changes in that particular race. out on the track for this next heat and we can tell you off position number one it is dudding off Tauranga the 5M car on position number two it is the 4N of Nicholson on position number three is the 8K of Cook the 11N of Joe Keane is on position number four then we go back to position number five and that is the 2 Z of Caden Barker the 27W of Smith is off position number six the 33C Tyler Warnock is on grid number 7. Grid number 8 is the 56k of Tyler. And then we go to position number 9, the 12C of Yeatman. The 74B of McGregor on position 10. The position 11 is the 57C of young Dylan Forsey. The 23N local fella, Dylan Benjamin on position 12. Position 13 is the 62N of John Schuster. The 91B of McIntosh, grid 14. Grid number 15 is the 83C of Finlay and the 38C of Finlay, the brother, is on grid number 16. That is our full field for heat number two. Lights are out, about to go ready to race. Here we go, racing. Watch for the five car as it dust flies. And it will be the five car that's going to lead them in. Watch for the 11 car of Joe Keane. The 33 of Tyler Warnock's up into fourth spot. And watch for the 2 and Z of Caden Barker. Already coming through here. Kimberly Yeatman is through here. Watch for the 27C and the 57 of Dylan Forsey. John Suster in the 62 card mid pack as they sort themselves out after lap number one. And it will be our five car of Honeybelt leading this one out. And a good wee battle with the eight car of Cook. Go back to our Terence here. Caden Barker done plenty of laps here this season, and it looks like he's going to come underway. As we've got the uh, 11 car of King, looks like he's going to pull in field. Hopefully, he'll be able to get off the track. Yes, he does. More issues for the 11 car as the field starts to spread themselves out, and they fire through a whole bunch in the mid pack. But it is the five car we're going to change here. Note the two car just trying to sneak underneath the eight of Cook. It is Barker on the charge. Watch for the 33, the club champion here, Tyler Warnock from Christchurch. Go back to the 56 car of Regan Tyler, current North Island champion. He's sitting in fifth spot. Then we go back to young Dylan Forsey out of the Christchurch. Spent many times up here. He's got a sprint car sitting in his shed. And we'll watch for the young fella out of the corner midgets as they fly through once again. It is a lap number six at 12, halfway through this race. And it's still being led out by Peter Honeybell, the 2 and Z of Caden Barker, hunting him down round three and four. Then we go back to the eight car of Cook, the 33 of Warlock, 56 of Tyler. And that's your top five as they head through. Then we go back to Dylan Forsey, a bit of a gap back through to the 27 of Smith from Wellington. As they fly around, watch the 56 car, he's starting to find the high line, looking for some bite in this track. 
but it is still the 5M of Honeybell. And he's got this race, he's got Barco breathing down his throat. Then we go back to Cook Warnock trying to find a spot. And Tyler not far away from Pouncing as well. He's going to run the low line this time. So he's trying to find some bite on this track here in Nelson. But he's going to have trouble catching the front two. As they go to lap 9 of 12. And another lap passes by and here comes Barker. Trying to chase down the five car. Down the back straight they go. Warlock still sitting in fourth. Still got Cook in front of him. Here we go back to the 56 of Tyler. 57 making his way through of young Dylan Forsey. As we look through and it will be a white flag out this time round as they shoot down three and four. Around the corner they go. And it will be Peter Honeywell's going to pick up the checkered flag for heat number one for his series and championship credentials. Bitter smoke coming out of Tyler Warlock's car. Hayden Barker will finish in second place from Dylan Cook. Here we go back to fifth spot will be Regan Tyler. Sixth spot will be Dylan Forsey. The sixth QN of John Schuster. Eighth spot goes to Vaughan Smith. The ninth spot, 12th C of Kimberly Yeatman. And the top 10 will be the 23 of Dylan Benson. And once again, a race that went from start to finish and no cautions once again on this beautiful Nelson track. But just watching Regan Tyler, who's trying to find some uh, track somewhere. He's trying to find a little bit down low there, Dan. He's trying to find a little bit up top. Up, Radio, okay. grid draws are up. Here we go. Okay, grid position number one will be the 11K of Crawford. On grid number two will be the 3NZ, Terence Durrell. On the grid number three, the 4A of Pennington. Position number four will be the 12K of Hodson. Here we go. To position number five is the 8C of Jeremy Webb. Position six, the 19C of Morris. On position seven, the 46GM of McKenzie. On position number eight, James Thompson from Greymouth, the two Greymouth boys together. Here we go to the 94B of Donahue. The 18K of Cook is there. Then we go back to the 84C of Morgan off position 11. Position number 12, the 81W of Smith. Then we go to the 99C of Scammell, position number 13. Position 14 is the 6N of Alicia Hill. Ben Stilburn, the 22N of position 15. Position 16 is the 66 of Jaden Corkle. That is our lineup as they circulate and go racing. And away we go racing. It looks like the free NZ of Terence Jewell is going to lead them into turns one and two. Can they all get round safely? They looks like they do as they work their way into turns three and four. It is the free NZ of Terence Jewell leading this one out. It looks like it will be the 11 of Royden Crawford out of Kitty Kitty. So they all pile in. They're still trying to sort themselves out. A little bit of contact going on in the background there, but it is the free and set of Terence Durrell from Royden Crawford out of Kitty Kitty. Then it's the eight car of Jeremy Webb, the four-time New Zealand champion. He'll be on the mission to uh, get up there in the feature. Here he comes. Looks like he's got a wee, uh, have a wee look on the inside of Crawford. Looks like he'll find second spot. Here comes Jeremy Webb. Terence Durrell's going to have a wee problem on his hand soon because the eight car of Jeremy Webb's coming up hot. Hot and fast as they work their way through, but it's the free and set of Terence Durrell leading this one out from the eight car of Jeremy Webb. Then it looks like we're going to go back to Royden Crawford, Troy Pennington out of Auckland, Cameron McKenzie from Greymouth, the six car of Alicia Hill. has got a wee bit of work to do near the back. Can she make her way up the front? We'll wait and see. But it is the free and set of Terence Durrell leading this one out from Jeremy Webb. Then we go back to Royden Crawford out of Kitty Kitty. Then it's Troy Prettington from Auckland as Alicia Hill's got a whole lot of problems on his hands. Oh, the 99 gets a little bit crossed up, manages to save it as they work their way through. But it is still the free and set of Terence Durrell leading this one out. But here comes Jeremy Webb almost on the bumper on the letterbox of the uh, free and set of Terence Durrell. He's right behind them, going to probably look high to get round as they work their way down the back straight now. Battles on between Terence Durrell and the former New Zealand champion of Jeremy Webb. Here we go, he's right on the back of him now. He's trying to find the high line. 
trying to get round, can't quite do it at the moment, so they work their way down the back straight now. Can he find a way on three and four? Still Terence Durrell shutting the door as they work their way through. Here he comes, may have a look on the outside now as the free ends here to Terence Durrell. He's got a real problem on his hands, the former New Zealand champion. Oh, we got one spun up. That's the 99 car of uh, Skimmel out of Christchurch. Logan Skimmel from uh, Christchurch just spins it up there. First caution of the New Zealand TQ title. And Jeremy Webb just trying to find a spot to go under, putting the pressure on him, but Dur Durrell responds quite nicely and just holds that race line as the rest of the field were just chasing the front two. And watch for Crawford, he's still up there, Pennington's there as well, Cameron McKenzie having a blinder in fifth spot. As just going to find themselves in the good positions. The 84 of both, uh, Ben Morgan, sorry, is there as well. Watch the orange machine, very good compared to as well. And in the 12 of Hodson. Watch for the 82 of James Thompson. Never to be discounted here the West Coast. And he's had plenty of years under the belt. He's semi-retired now. He's got his young boy Riley racing out of Greymouth as well. But uh, he's already won a heat race here in Nelson as we go racing once again. Well, here we go. Restart underway. And it is still the free NZ of Terence Terrell leading this one out from the eight car of Jeremy Webb as they all sort themselves out. It's only a four lap dash to the finish now in this one, as it's still the free NZ of Terence Durrell leading this one out. Here comes the six of Alicia Hill. has got a wee bit of a battle at the back to try and make up some spots. As a bit of a bunch up at the back there, so we'll watch that, because that could be where the trouble starts. A little bit of contact starting to go in. Oh, Corkle makes contact with a 94 car. But it is the free NZ of Terence Durrell leading this one out from the eight car of Jeremy Webb as they work their way through two more laps to run so what can he do here the white flag will come out the white one lap dash to the finish now for the free and of Terence Durrell he'll be wrapped to see the white flag having Jeremy Webb all over the back of him as they go into three and four it looks like it's going to be a race win to the free and Z of Terence Durrell from the eight car of Jeremy Webb then we go back to Royden Crawford then we're going to go Ben Morgan Troy Pennington Cameron McKenzie James Thompson, Harry Hodgson, Ethan Donahue, Jaden Corkle rounding out the top 10. All right, so we've got Terence Durrell, who taken out that one from Jeremy Webb, Royden Crawford, Ben Morgan, Troy Pennington out of Auckland, Cameron McKenzie, James Thompson, Harry Hodgson, Ethan Donahue, and Jaden Corkle, your top 10. <laughs> Actually do with your four-wheel drive. No matter what you do with your four-wheel drive, we've got the right tyre for you. So come on down to Mag and Turbo. Well, the first round of our qualifying heats run and done, and it was a win for one NZ Aaron Humble. Does that settle the nerves? Uh, to be fair, today I haven't had many nerves compared to last year, so it's been good. I got sleep last night. Uh, I mean, I knew from a grid three I had to capitalise, and that track there isn't something we're used to. But then. I haven't been able to use some of my experience to put it together and get enough to get the win. You had to work hard to get past the six of Dwayne Todd, but it looked like your car was coming off the turn a little bit square and able to make that move down into turn number two. Yeah, these 12, 12 lap races are long races. You can't win at the first corner. And you, if I just get behind him after that first lap, I'll have a good crack at him. And then the car was pretty good the whole race. I mean, I just checked lap times and we're in the same 10th from lap five to lap 10. So we've got a good car and um, hopefully a good driver and we'll see what we can do. Did you have a look at those other two heat races to see what was happening? 
Yeah, I watched both of them. You just, you got to study the people you're racing against and see what they do. And uh, I've taken a bit of what some people are doing and um, see if I can use it. Otherwise, I think I've got a pretty good memory of what to do around here. So um, we'll do that and see what we can do from grid seven. Looked like some good passes were being made through all three of those heats for the first three rows, but it seemed if you got stuck at the back in and, and a bit of traffic, it was hard work. Yeah, the track's pretty slick, so when you're kind of even with the people around you, it's kind of hard to get past. So I'm hoping when the back grid comes for me in my third race that there's some moisture in the track and we can get up high, but um, my elbows are up. I'm not giving this title up without a fight, so um, these guys better be ready because I'm going to come out swinging. What grid are you off in your second heat? Uh, grid 7, then 15 for the night, and then two others tomorrow. All right, good luck. Cheers. Thanks, Mike. Well, yeah, we're going to shoot back to the racetrack in the Liz Production Saloons. Fast Yeti, the 51 machine, is leading this one on lap number 3 of 10. We go back to the triple nine of David Allen. Paul Cornelius in the 12 car. Then we go back to young Amy Carter, the 87 of Jeff Watson. The 55 of Richard Ross, one of our committee members, doing the hard yards in the Production Saloons. But it looks like Fast Yeti in the 51 machine's got himself a wee bit of a handy lead. Battle going on between the triple nine and the twelve of Vaughan Cornelius as they head down the back straight. Ooh. And the field, wee bit of contact with the 72 of Liam Gray. It looks like he's going to fire up the big Falcon, get it back out on the track again as our leaders come round. And this is lap number five of ten. So he'll find himself down the back of the pack. It looks like we've got some, oh no, the 16 car. One of our newer drivers, of course, that is Eddie, ah, uh, sorry. Uh, Caleb Head but the cars spread themselves far and wide around the leader of the 51 of Eddie France watch for the battle between the 12 and the triple nine of Eddie France uh, Vaughan Cornelius and the triple nine of David Allen just looking at Amy Carter in the 30 machine as he fires through then we've got the 87 of Jeff Watson he's picked up a couple of race wins over the last few weeks as is young Leachy in the yellow machine but he's a wee way back to try and catch up with these ones as our leaders Start to come on one of the back markers that is a 72 from the Greymouth. Liam Gray's done plenty of travelling over the last two or three weeks. I've seen him at pretty much every racetrack we've been to. And it looks like he's going to put some pressure on our leader. So this will bunch them right back up again. And we go to lap number nine. So the white flag is out. See if they can settle each other down around the final turn. To see if there's any last gap changes. And it looks like it's going to stay as status quo. The 51 of Eddie France will pick up the race with from the triple nine of David Allen. Then we'll switch back to the 12 of Vaughan Cornelius, the 13 of Abby Carter, the 87 of Jeff Watson. Richard Watts, Ross will be the six car, uh, sorry, position number six from Chrissy Wolf in the seven car. Then we go back to grid number, uh, position number eight is the 16 of Dave Leach. And ninth spot is the 69 of Brendan Byrne and the 16 of Caleb Head will finish in the, the top 10 for our production salute. Another interview. Yeah, that's right, Jody. We've got the five M car of Peter Honeybell, Heat Two race winner. Got to get, uh, got to feel good after that one. Yeah, it was uh, definitely a, a big repayment for the guys that just uh, dug in deep. Um, we just did a motor change. Um, unfortunately, we lost a lost a gearbox and hot lap. So, um, big thanks to everyone that uh, that jumped in and pitched in and helped. And thanks for the Pennington family for the use of their spare engine. Um, it's not a not a thing that everyone carries around here as a spare engine, but we're grateful that uh, we teamed up with them to, and for the weekend, and, and they managed to lend us their motor. That track at the moment getting a wee bit slick, getting a wee bit dicey out there? Yeah, it's uh, definitely pretty uh, billiard slick, uh, or billiard smooth and, and slick as it comes. So I'm um, going to make it very, very interest, interesting um, come the later part of the night. Um, hopefully it continues just to widen out. Um, but like I say, uh, kind of now the experience will, will start to come in and it's a bit of a ballerina dancing deal on, on, on your feet. You know, you, 
you're using both pedals and, and little, uh, very, very little of it at the moment. So um, kind of suits my style. So uh, hopefully I can use that to my advantage. And what grids have you got coming up later tonight? Oh, I ha being that we're just so frantically changing the engine, I haven't had a look. But I'm telling you, it's probably not good being that I just had my uh, my first one was off pole. So I'd say there's a lot of mahi to go in from, in from here. And obviously all the way from Mount Monganui, got a few sponsors on the car you want to thank? Yeah, big thanks to Chris Lane, the, my car owner, Always Facades, um, Altherm, Windows Systems, Ed here, uh, Honeybell Racing Developments, King Composites. Uh, it's a you know, smaller team that uh, Chris has put together and... Uh, like I say, unfortunately he's not here today because he's actually stuck on a job in Waikiki Island. So um, fingers crossed we can have him here tomorrow and support. But uh, yeah, and just again, thanks to the Pennington family. They obviously helped get us down here with their two-car trailer. And Ed, funny enough, have just lent us their spare engine too. All righty, good luck for the rest of the weekend, eh, man? Cheers, thank you. All right, this time we've got the 3NZ of Terence Durrell here. That was an intense first qualifying heat for you. Yeah, no, couldn't really ask for more, really, with the heat run. But yeah. Really happy with how we're going so far with the new track and everything. But, yep. Took advantage of that grid position. Seemed like it took you a few laps to suss out the quick line. Yeah, definitely. Because tracks are so much different to what I'm used to. There's not really a straightaway. So, yeah, getting used to it. And we should be fast by the end of the weekend, hopefully. You also had a former four time national champion flying through the field from grid five to start putting a lot of pressure on you and rubbing bumpers for a while there, but then you sussed it out and it went to a caution. Yep, yeah, no, I wasn't really impressed with the yellow, but hey, carry on and that's what it is, though. Well, the yellow may have done you a favour because you were so fast off the restart, you pulled about four car lengths, he never he never made it back. Yep, no, it's good, eh? Definitely, he's running here quite a lot, so can't complain. Uh, so how were the nerves coming into that first race? I was a little bit nervous because practice wasn't really ideal for us, but yeah, we're sorting it out and make a couple of changes with the car and we'll be sweet. All right, you've got some great sponsors and some grandparents that you want to give a mention to. Yeah, yep. No, grandparents watching at home, Stan and Sonia. Uh, thank you to Southpac Trucks, uh, Hell Performance New Zealand, Harris Race Cars, uh, Technical Welding Services, King Signs, um, yeah, Mum and Dad. They're awesome, so, yep, nah, thanks to them, yeah. We off in the second heat? Oh, I don't actually know, uh, in the middle somewhere, and, yeah. Nice and calm and composed, good luck. Thank you, thank you. Radio sprint cars out there, I hear uh, Sonia and Stan are watching via the Pits TV, so big welcome to them, legends of Rotorua Speedway. Oh, yep, I think, uh, yeah, Terence, I'll be cheering Terence on, no doubt. As we get to go, sprint car racing will be the 57 of Connor Ang. He's going to lead this one on from Jaden Dodge. Watch for Steve Duff. Sorry, Jamie Duff coming through there. Caleb Vaughan just takes on the inside of him. Rounds all three and four as they fire through. But it is Connor Rangi, the local Nelson boy, leading this one out. Looks like he's opened up a bit of a gap. Oh, 74. Got oh we got Jaden Dodge round. And oh, oh. got nowhere to go. And then as Brenham Crouch has just clipped the wall, luckily kept it on its side. But yeah, the 77 faced in the wrong way there for a wee bit. Just got loose out of two. Must have found some of those marbles out of turn two and spun it round. Put the horse pad down just a little bit too quickly. Here's the replay. This as we just slow. watch. And he oh, just got, got tapped by the right front wheel of the 95 car as they come round. That's what caused that. And we just watched the... Uh, 75 nearly, nearly rolled it, managed to sit it back down again. And it looks like everything's not too bad there, so we'll just have a wee bit of a look Here at it. Here we go, from the infield, yeah, gets tagged, doesn't he? Caleb Bourne might be on the uh, steward's office after that one. And the poor Brendan Crouch, nowhere to go, apart from into Jaden Dodge. Hopefully not too much damage. Not really what we want to see in sprint cars, only the six of them. No, no good with him going roly-poly this early on in the meeting, but oh boy, 57, Connor Rangi certainly just said, mate, this Dalton machine knows oh. how to go fast. Here we go, a little bit of damage. Oh yeah, it looks like he's yeah. broken the uh, steering arm on the 75 machine, so he's heading infield, so not a good start for young Burnham Crouch. That'll be an easy fix, I think, for Kevin Freeman out in the pits, and we'll just see if we can get the 77 machine sorted. I've got a feeling the 95 might be off the back on this one, on the restart. 
Yeah, no, they're pushing no, someone up. No, what are they doing? No, we're... So okay, so the demolition derby is now <laughs> going to happen very shortly. <laughs> we won't wait till December. We'll start it off now. <laughs> and it's a very more, a lot more expensive playing sprint car demolition derby yeah. than what it is playing dirty old Honda Accord demolition derby. So it looks like there's a bit of a dispute with Dodge and Duff. Yeah. Kevin Freeman's looking on, going, sort it out, fellas. He's ripping his hair out. His car's parked on the infield. He can't do much else. Looks like we got a few claps. I think he's been sent in. And I think they yeah. sent Jaden Dodge to the infield. Yeah. So there we go. The toys are being thrown out of the cot early. Yep, they're sending them in. And, well, he didn't dodge that one, did young Jaden? And she's all upset. This is, of course, all tribute to Paddy North. So we must think about what we're here for. It is a tribute to Paddy North in the family up there in the corporate box. Just as well they have big fuel tanks on these sprint cars because they're about to do a 50 lapper. <laughs> 49 of them are going to be under caution. And we're getting a good view. Is they going to tow it? I think they're going to tow it now. Yeah. Well, look, I'll tell you what. What they should do is just open the gate get out Harley Rob. <laughs> what do you reckon? <laughs> Harley, get out here. <laughs> oh, no, we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it a glass. Yeah, we got thumbs up from the referees. <laughs> Chris Riddle says, bring out Harley. He'll move it quick. <laughs> He'll move anything, Harley, won't he? Oh, mate, it is great to uh, <laughs> see these boys. He's probably lumbered up in the car wondering why I'm calling out his name once again. <laughs> of course, young Harley Rob, you wouldn't believe it, but I actually went to school with his mum. Oh. And um, young Harley was actually in the uh, supermarket trolley and nappies when I first met him yeah. and his brother, and then they played a bit of rugby for Kaipoi. Yeah, Harley was right. always injured. Here we go, lights right down. Right here we go, racing once again. Connor Rangi's going to lead this one from... Jamie Duff, then we go back to the 95 of Caleb Ford, the 28 of Eulenburg, and we're only on the lap number one of 10, so it's going to be a good fast race doing 13 second odd laps. The guys out in the pits going, what's happened out that way? But it is the 57 young Connor Rangi, the former New Zealand youth mini stock champion out of the Oxford Speedway, leading this one out. Young fella in the Dalton's sponsored machine is doing the business here tonight on his home track. Watching for Jamie Duff, just got a little bit loose, brushes the wall. Says, I'll stay away from that one. And Caleb Vaughan's right behind him, the two Cantabrians. Followed by Kia Keys, uh, Brad, uh, sorry, Tony Unenberg. And he's just watching the carnage go on in front of him, trying to stay out of trouble. But it is all about young Connor Rangi, and he's fired this one up. Got it shooting through, lap number five of 10. We said he'll knock the laps down. Jamie Duff, the South Island champion, can't do much with the 57 machine. Former War of the Wings champion, just doing the business here at Nelson Speedway. This track immaculately flat. They can put the cars anywhere, just don't want to put them up the wall. And it is the 57 machine of Rangi just smoking them as they go through a lap number six of 10. The power going on, we're into the 12 second laps once again. And there's a ranking leading this one. Duff trying to play chase. All old workmates are the Duff and Connor Rangi. As it. they fire through. Nice and they've start. done the caution. Oh, they've finished it up. I've yep. got lap 8 of 10. So they've decided that uh, they've had enough of that one. And no doubt there will be a few uh, stomps up the uh, referee steps. As the referees have a bit of a calm in their feet. This will be great. <laughs> oh, Mike Glover will be loving this one, of course. Actually, that was Kyle was supposed to be here tonight. He's not here tonight. That's unfortunate. New Zealand Championship. Far away. If you go racing, it will be Corey McQuillan that leads this one out from John Myers. Here we go back to Alicia Hill. Has a bit of a tangle with Guilford. And it will be Steve Duff Jr. off the pack watching the rest of them fight through. But it is the 12th car of Corey McQuillan is a leading the War of the Wings champion. And he's got himself out to a handy lead. Down the back straight they go and there's nothing stopping young Corey. Got himself set up beautifully. And the rest of them just in the wake of the 12th car. Down they go, around three and four once again, just knocking 12.4. Very, very quick time from Corey McQuillan, the only one 
that's got in the uh, 12 second lap speed at the moment. The rest of them all track, tracking around the 13s. But it is McQuillan got himself dialed and nice. Here comes John Myers trying to find that outside line. Alicia Hill takes the low line. We go back to Guilford's running low. Steve Duffers. Hill gets a little bit loose on the black stuff. Straightens it back up, but she's going to lose at least one position, possibly two, as the pressure comes on from the local girl who's racing the TQ as well. But it is all 12 car off McQuillan. Lend this one. As we look at the back there, and Steve Duff Jr. trying to get past Alicia Hill. That's the back markers. It is a lap number six of ten. And it is Corey McQuillan leading this one. Just looking at the back markers still with the 15th of Junior trying to get past the sixth car of Alicia Hill. And out in front, Corey McQuillan, there he is, leading this one. John Wise can't catch him. These guys still in there. Early 20s, late 20s as they shoot through on lap number seven. So good speed, no issues so far. Guilford's flying through as the 15th car of Junior parks it up on the green stuff. And the white flag out this time round for Corey McQuillan. And just the four cars on the track still. And it will be a race win as he comes round three and four. Just sets it up nicely. Myers closes the gap. But it will be a race win to Corey McQuillan from John Myers Jr. Max Gilford will finish in the second spot from Alicia Hill. And it was a little bit untidy towards the back of the pack, but out in front. Told you he's got big ups on this young fella, Corey McQuillan. Racing saloon cars for a couple of years. I think he had production saloons, a street stock, a stock car. But he found himself at home in the uh, sprint car. Good for these ones, just uh, checking with everything that we've got here, the 48Ns, one of our newer drivers, of course, has got the flag on the back of that one. And we'll try and check up. Matt Roller. Oh, Matt Roller, it is too. We saw him up here earlier trying to get his ALS system sorted out, of course. He's got the young young baby as well. So good to see a 48N back out on the track. And this car has been a wee while in the process of being built but good to see him finally make it out on track he's got the high vis flag on the back of it under the mentor program federal new zealand three meetings make sure you're confident enough as we watch these stock cars watch for the one that's got naughty on the uh, top sun guys up <laughs> it is our south island champion of course also part of the canterbury glen eagles the defending Team's champs out of the super stocks at Palmerston North. Not sure if he'll make it this year. High hopes that he'll head up with the Canterbury Crushers to Auckland at Waikaraka Park. They got second last year in the stock car teams as well. And uh, won a few races in the 10 car of Mike Kislov in the super stock. Just racing the stock car, of course, brand new car this year from Rob's Race Cars down in Christchurch. Got the Midwest motor in it, and that thing is absolutely quick as we're about to go racing. First seen the stock cars. And away we go. Look at this. Harley Rob straight on it. Going to give uh, the 89 a bit of a push. They all fire in. The turns one and two. They're going to fire down the back straight now. It's Harley Rob. Oh, one in the wall. Benera just uh, went straight into the wall. We got the turn right. And into the wall he goes. And Harley Rob gives the wall a wee tap as everyone goes up high. Baker goes round as uh, Harley Rob. Leading this one out from the 99 of DeFaro, but he's going to get crunched by the 88 of Cleveland. Almost four wide, going out of turns one and two as they work their way through. But it is Harley Rob out in front from it looks like the 416 of Jack Rarity. Then we're going to go back to Brendan Lawton in the uh, 244. Then it looks like Troy Cleveland's in there, Melissa Gifford, Wade Sweeting. It's like Kerry Walker's in there as well, so they work their way down the back straight. Oh, Hall's gone off. That's still in Hall on the infield in the tank. But out in front it is the 991 of Harley Robber leading this one out from the 416 of Jack Rarity. Then we go back to the 88 car of Troy Cleveland, the 151 of Wade Sweeting. 
It looks like Brina Lawton's in there as well. Melissa Gifford as they work their way through. But it's at the moment, it's Harley Robb out in front as Hall trying to get the car going again. Watch out for him. He says wrecking ball on the car. He can wreck some cars if he wants to. As they work their way down the back straight now, it's still Harley Robb leading this one out as uh, Jack Rarity, Wade Sweeney and Troy Cleveland, the free Blenheim people fighting it out uh, with different letters on the side of their car. There's a lot from Blenheim fighting this one out, but it is Harley Robb in control as Cam Lancashire gets his first taste of uh, bumper action as the 89 car just gives him a wee tap as uh, they work their way through, but Harley Robb in control of this one from the 151 of Wade Sweeney. We go back to the 416 of Jack Rarity. Then we're going to go back to the 88 car of Troy Cleveland. So he'll get past the 88 car, Dave Manera, who uh, got his first taste of stock car action, hitting the wall on turn one. As they work their way through it, it's still Harley Robb leading this one out by quite a fair bit as they all just get past some lap traffic. But Harley Robb in control as the white flag won't be too far away for him as they work their way down the back straight now. Just got a little bit of lap traffic to contend with. So whether or not they'll let him run. Now, oh, it gives the 33 a Kai Robinson a big serve into the wall. So Harley is uh, testing that bumper out. And oh, nearly open over. Wade Sweeting dishing it out. And we've got a spring that's gone off. And I think that's the white flag. Yeah, red and they've gone red. Yep, there was a uh, dish in first by Harley Robb and uh, Wade Sweeting says, well, if you want seconds, I'll give you seconds. <laughs> Slap him back up on the wall. I think they've been playing possum over the last couple of meetings and uh, well, hopefully it'll be a thumb up from the 33 machine. Got, uh, was that bug on the top of the wall there? Of course, Naughty got him first and then, of course, Wade Sweeting, two of the Canterbury Crutches, decided that we we're going to pick on the car. And it looks like they're just going to have the tow truck over there. We've got the clicking of the course just checking them out. The ambulance is staying inside, so not a major there. Good to see the 88 machine of Dave Moore, of course, normally used to super saloon racing. Slapped that wolf early on, so she says, well, I might as well get it out of the way <laughs> early on. Best thing to do, of course, next thing you know, he would say, well, I haven't had a roll over yet, so he must have had one of those. But uh, yeah, the 33 machine got a couple of good slaps here. Just looking at the rim on the 33 machine, certainly looking a bit second-hand on one side of it. No doubt they'll bounce back, they'll rush, brush it off and uh, get him back out on the racetrack. Here's the replay, just gets served by Harley Robb. And then here comes here comes Wade Sweeting, just charges in like a, like a bull in a china shop. <laughs> here we go, just serves him in, boom, into the wall hard. Here he goes, Wade Sweeting, just lined him up. Right now, about to go racing once again. As, Lights are out. As they get the green. So it's going to be Harley Robb who will take the uh, race win. Harley Robb takes out heat one. Everyone's favourite Harley Robb taking out heat number one of the stock cars from Wade Sweeting. Then we go back to Jack Rarity, Troy Cleveland, Raynan Lawton, Melissa Gifford, Jason DeFaro, Zach Baker, Kerry Walker and Zoe Connolly coming home in 10th. But everyone's favourite Harley Robb. Oh. I don't know, don't know if he's Mad Mike's favourite. <laughs> he, he's had, he's won, he's about three up on Mad Mike at the moment after Christchurch last weekend. But great to see him travelling up here, the South Island champion. Of course, I think the South Islands are in Christchurch later on in the season.
The St Nicholas is a familiar sight around Bluff as she steams out to capture Kandu Fishing's famous Bluff Kinner. Once caught, the Kinner is brought back to the purpose-built factory in Bluff where it is processed, packed and shipped fresh to you. But that's not all that Kandu Fishing can do for you. Try some of their green bone fish or delicious power products and you will soon see why seafood from the Bluff is world famous. So head to your local fish market or supermarket and ask for Kandu Fishing Kinner Fish or Power. Kandu Fishing, there's nothing we can't do for you. Are you building a new commercial business or home? Or is it time that your existing premises had a repaint anywhere in the South Island? Then Anderton Decorators have you covered. From floor to ceiling, wall to roof, Anderton Decorators offer the latest techniques, equipment and technology to make even the hardest tasks seem simple. Anderton Decorators also has the expert team to take the frustration out of your next project. Call Shane today on 027 Painting. It's 027 724 6846. Anderton Decorators. We have you covered. There's certainly plenty of uh, 99 cent. Another one, Joseph Carroll, we haven't seen before. And one, one that's actually missing. Oh, Darcy Rasmussen, just looking for young Darcy out there. Is he out there? Should be out there. Yep, yep there he is. Watch for him. He'll be a quick one as well. About to go racing. And it will be Cohen Thompson, the 54 machine from Greymouth, leading them through from the 48 of Lockie Martin. And then we go back to the 62 car of Brody Morris. And we way back, it is the 35 car of uh, Caden Simmons. Big bunch of cars coming through there, watching for the 18 of Conley Webley. He'll make his way up, as will Lakin Thompson, the 71 of Darcy Rasmussen, the 23 of Bailey Bensmanson, as they all pass the 10 car. This is the new fella. So only his second race meeting. He's got a whole heap of cars to race against as he gets his footing in this grade. But it is the 54 machine, look at that, just absolutely fly. From the 48 of Lockie Martin, bunching through here, young Bailey Benderson starting to come past the 35 machine. Watch for the 8 car of Monika Rawson, making her way up through the grid. This is the 23 of Jack Brown, he's got a few places to make through the Access Man sponsored machine. But it is a straight show from the 54 machine. As they fire through, Lockie Martin, the battle on for the minor places. The 67 of Lakin Thompson sits in the third spot. As he passes Morris, here comes the 18 of Conley Webley. He was racing down in Invercargill on the circuit racing last weekend. Two days of circuit racing in the 2000 series, 2K series down in Invercargill. But out in front, it is the 54 of Cohen Thompson, lap number five. And... Nice. That is the chequered flag for the 54 machine. Picks up a good race win from our series defending champion of Lockie Martin, Lakin Thompson. A Thompson one and three from the 18 of Conley Webley. Here we go back to Young at 71 of Darcy Rasmussen, the 62 of Morris, 23 yep. of Benson, 54. As they all fire through. And good re racing from our corner mission. Of course, these are. Ages 8 to 15. So as soon as you turn 8, you can start racing these things, which is quite neat. Draws. Here we go, 56k, Regan Tyre, North Island champion is off position number one. The 83 of Finley is off position number two. 4B of Dunning is off a position three. Position four goes to the 27W of Smith from Wellington. Position five, the 46C of Bruce 
and position six, Yai Tien of Jack Warson on position six. Position seven, the one in zero of Aaron Humble. We'll see how he gets through the traffic. John Johnson, the DNF, on position number eight. Position number nine will be the 33 CF Tyler Warnock, the Nelson champion. The 5N of Dunning off position 10. The 97C of Seoul on position 11. And the 1274B will be off that. Good 13, the 77G of McGregor. The 4N of Mia Nicholson off position 14. And position number 15, seeing them all at the back, will be John Schuster, the 62N. That is our lineup for this second lot of races. Here for the New Zealand TQ title put to us by, of course, the Amber Court Motel with Liana and James Nicholson. As we're about to go underway, waiting for the lights to go out. Yeah, the light what, down. Watch for the 56 machine. The North Island champion. I talked to Jeremy Webb earlier in the week. He said, mate, this might be the guy to watch. So if the former New Zealand champion says, mate, this might be the guy, he had a good side of him up at Kiki the other day. We'll see what he does. The one in zero of Humble. He's got a few cars to pass as we go racing once again. And it will be Tyler that's going to lead them through. Oh, a bit of a contact from the four in the back of the 27, but they straighten themselves up. A little bit messy, but they do sort themselves out. Down the back straight. And we got one spun up and parked in. And it's the 52 of John Austin once again. Not a good campaign so far for the 52 machine. But it is our North Island champion leading them out from the 83 of Blake Finlay. Then we go back to the 27, Vaughan Smith from Wellington. Good to see quarter million out of Wellington as the four car gets a little bit loose of Dudding. And the one of Humble up to fourth spot already as he works his way through the grid. He's got the 27, he's going to try and sneak under. Watching for the 33 of Warnock mid pack as they go through. So the battle's on through the middle part of the race. But it is all. Oh, 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 we got Wheeler to tag the 17 car. He'll bring the caution on. He'll park it up. And we'll wait to see what the referees decide on that. Mike Glover will have a wee bit of a look at that. We'll have a chance to have a look at that. We're going to see the Pits TV as well. Whether he had a wee bit of a contact. I think he did. And whether he was the cause of the orange light. We'll see. Might see someone at the back there. Poor old John T. Austin, mate. He's having a hard time on his home track. Dad, uh, grandfather just celebrated 30, 35 years at Bidfoods. Got a big celebration from the New Zealand CEO the other day. Great campaigner here, young Jaunty, former mini stock driver. Plays hockey, and mate, he's a tall fella for a TQ. I tell you, there's not a lot of leg room left in that chassis. Rightio, we'll get the referees just to sort out where they're going to slot everyone back in. Wait to see for position. Hopefully they don't do a sprint car thing and start arguing with each other. Otherwise, we will have to get Harley Rob out. He can handle these guys. <laughs> Right, yo, it is a ring and Tyler. Great to see him down here. Here's the replay. And yeah, the replay coming it? up. Here we go. Just seeing if he oh, got a bit of tag. Yeah. Might have been the 62 car, possibly, of Schuster that might have just managed here to get go. him. Not quite sure. Just out of camera view. Yeah. And he just parks it up. Puts the caution on. This is a clever tactic from our drivers, knowing that they might be able to get their position back if they stay on the track and go caution. Of course, if they move and then go caution, then it will be their fault. So there's a bit of it's a bit of game of chess, I'd call it. Um, knowing what to do, where to park. Of course, as you see, he fired it up pretty much straight away once the all caution light come on and said, Radio, I'll try and find my spot back. So the interesting one to watch is where the 62 and the um, Tyler machine goes as to where they're going to put them back or whether they just call a racing incident from the 17 machine. Whoa. Looks like they're just going to leave them where they are and just call it a racing incident from Mike Glover. And I've got high respect for this referee. He's been able to do uh, some self-adjusting in a couple of races in Greymouth. Last time I watched him referee, some very good decisions, and I've got full faith in uh, Mike Glover up there in the office. Looks like he's got himself sorted out. Looks like the lights are out. And we're about to go racing once again, and this time it's going to lead them through. Watch for the jump from the 27 machine. The other one that got a big jump was the four car. Stood across a couple of drivers, made a bit of wheel contact. And look at that, Humble's won himself up in the third place, so the fight's on. Finlay's got himself battled with the one in Z, not too far from behind him. As they have a tight bunch, Warlock trying to come through there as well. As they fire themselves around the five car of Honeywell. Making his way up through the track as well. So he's the first heat winner. As the 56 machine, the North Island champion, opens up a gap early on. 
of lap number five. Warnock trying to make his way round through the mid pack as they fire through, but it is all. Tyler at the moment, humble. Finley Dudding coming through. Then we go back to Smith, Honeywell, Warnock, Booth, McGregor. And he fires it up. It looks like they've opened themselves up a bit of a gap. All got the same sort of race lines at the moment. No crisscrossing. Schuster and the 17 continues to have a bit of a battle. Warnock goes wide. As Tyler just spreads that field out. Opens up the gap. Doesn't look like Humble's going to have much of an impact on the North Island champion. As the forecast slots back into position number four. And that is Dunning. Oh, from Yane and all oh, smoke coming out of one of the cars. Is that Warlock yep, once again? It is 33. So it is Warlock's got a wee bit of a puff of smoke. Not too sure whether it's just a wee oil line that's leaking out of that one. Doesn't seem to affect his race at the moment as we are on lap nine. So coming into double figures. As Tyler leads through from 1NZ. Then we go back to the 83 machine of Finley. The four coming through of Dudding. Five of Honeybell trying to make a gap up. On the 27, can't quite do it. As our leaders come through, should be getting a white flag as they do. And there's a ring and Tyler won the feature at Kiki a couple of weeks ago. Most of these guys had a weekend off last week. And he'll pick up this round two heat win from the one NZ of Humble. And we go back oh. to the 83 thing as we get a bit of a tangle up. And someone's gone round, it's a 17 car once again. And it's gone to course, the checker flag is out, so we'll wait to see if they've got to do a race, what they do with this one. W will be off grid number one. Then we go to 11 in of Joel Keane. Jaden Corkle, the 66, will be off position three. Wash for the 57C of Dylan Forsey. On position number five will be the 12K of Hodson. Then we go back to the 8C of Jeremy Webb. The 8K of Cork will be off position seven, position eight, the 46 of young Cameron McKenzie. Position number nine will be the 2 NZ of young Caden Barker. Kimberly Yeatman, the 12C, will be off position 10. And position 11, the 18K of Cook. The other Cook as well. Then we go back to position 12, the 4A of Pennington. Position number 13 will be the 38C of Finley. The 23 of Dylan Benmanson off position 14. The 15 car, sorry, position 15, the 91B of McIntosh. The 82 GM of James Thompson. And that is our grid for this one. He's only a young fella, out of corner midgets, great character. He's got a sprint car sitting in the shed ready to go. And a very competitive. We call him the Jeremy Webb Mini Me as we go racing. And away they go, a bit of a bunch up here. Let's see what happens as they work their way through turns. Three and four, he gets out of this. Looks like it might be the 11 car of Joe Keenan. Gets out of it nicely, it is. So go back to the eight car of Jeremy Webb. Here he comes, a former New Zealand champion. 
Damon Smith, 81W in there as well. So work their way down the back straight they go. They all start to sort themselves out. Jeremy Webb got second in the last seat. Can he update it? Oh, the 11 goes a bit wide. That's going to open the door for Jeremy Webb to go through. You don't want to give him too many opportunities because he'll just take it as they work their way. Down the back straight they go. It's the eight car, Jeremy Webb in the lead from the 11 car, Joe Keenan. Then we go back to the 57 of Dylan Forsey. Then we go back to the 66 of Corkle, the 2NZ of Caden Barker. As they work their way down the back straight they go. It's still going to be the eight car of Jeremy Webb leading this one out from the 11 of Joe Keenan. Then we go back to the 57 of Dylan Forsey. Jaden Corkle in there as well. Keep your eyes on a 2 and said, or oh, someone gets a little bit of contact on the back straight. So they'll be keeping an eye on that one. But it is the eight car of Jeremy Webb who's just decided to bolt the field. Joe Keenan's trying his hardest to catch up with him. Can't quite do it at the moment as they work their way. Down the back straight they go. It's still the eight car of Jeremy Webb in control of this one from the 11 of Joe Keenan. Then we go back to the 57 of Dylan Forsey. Then it's going to be the 66 of Corkle as they work their way through. Down the back straight they go. It's still going to be the eight car of Jeremy Webb in control of this one. A bit of argy bargy going on in the back there. As they work their way through, it's still going to be the eight car of Jeremy Webb leading this one out. Forsey trying to battle for second with the 11 car, Joe Keenan. <laughs> oh, we got one up, nearly one over. Here we go. Oh, one in the wall. One gets clipped, nearly over. Oh, there we oh, go. Slam, just... Slam Marie down in turns three and four. Bit of chaos and shoot in the back of the pack as Webb led this one out. And what's the aftermath of this one? We'll wait and see who's still going. And Dylan, Dylan here's the Terry, replay. There we go. We got a wee bit of a replay as to what's happening. Trying to see who's got loose. I think this everything oh, got tight. Yeah. yeah, just spun out on the black stuff, and everyone trying to avoid it. Bit of a slide job. The one going around oh. the wall. I'm not too sure that was sort of launched it a little bit. Rightio, let's have a look now. It is Jeremy Webb, our former New Zealand champion. And behind him, it looks like the two, no, it is the Dick Wicks machine of Joe Keane having a good run this time. Where's Dylan Forsey? They've got him slipping down in about fifth spot. So we're about to go racing once again. So green light goes, we've got a restart in another heat of the three-quarter midget title. So they work their way down the back straight, the eight car of uh, Jeremy Webb's just going to bolt. Here comes the two NZ of Caden Barker. Keep your eyes on him as they work their way through. And they pass us here at the tower. They all sort themselves out. The 57 of Forzi trying to get past the two NZ of Caden Barker. Keep your eyes on him. Here we go. Battles on Forzi and Barker. The two NZ and the 57 battling it out as they work their way through. It's still the eight car of Jeremy Webb just avoiding all of this carnage. He's out in front. I don't know if anyone's going to quite catch him. The two NZ might be able to as they work their way through into turns at three and four they go the eight car of Jeremy Webb passes here at the tower still in control Forsey and Barker still having a great wee tussle for third third and fourth as they work their way through but the eight car of Jeremy Webb still in control of this one. Oh, we got one that rides the wheel two that have come together and it looks like the 23 of Dylan Benzeman once again in the wars Oh. Yep, just had it coming together and stalled it there on a turn number four. And just watching as they come through. Jaden Corkle, mate, he loves this sort of track conditions. Sitting there behind Jeremy Webb. Lights are out. Caden Barker ready to bounce. Dylan Forsey, Dylan Cook as we go racing. Here we go, restart once again. And it's Jeremy Webb who's going to bolt. But here comes the 66 of Corkle. Watch the two NZ of Barker as they work their way down the back straight now. It's still the eight car, Jeremy Webb from the uh, 66 of Corkle. But here comes Barker side by side as they work their way through. White flag will be out. One more lap to run as they work their way down the back straight they go. It looks like it's going to be a heat win to the eight car of Jeremy Webb as he comes off the turn. So it's going to be a race win to Jeremy Webb. It looks like third place will go to Caden Barker. Dylan Cook in the eight car from Dylan Forsey, Joe Keenan, Damon Smith, Cameron McKenzie, Troy Pennington, and James Thompson. And here's your top 10. Yep, first place went to the 
Former New Zealand champion of Jeremy Webb, second place to local Jaden Corkle. Third went to the 2NZ of Caden Barker, four spot the 8K of Dylan Cook. Fifth spot the 57 young Dylan Forsey, sixth spot the 11N of Joe Keane. 81 W Damon Smith was in seventh spot from the eighth spot was the 46 of young Cameron McKenzie. Ninth spot the 4A of Troy Pennington and finishing them off with another Greymouth driver James Thompson in tenth spot. That is your top ten for Group B versus Group D or race number ten here at the Amber Court Motels New Zealand TQ Championship. the grids and we got here we go the local 17 Morgan Frost off position number one next to him the other good local is Alicia Hill on position two then we go to 12 in Graham Porter the 36 here Scott Bailey off grid four grid number five is the 84C off Morgan the 11K of Crawford off grid six grid number seven is the 91C of Ethan Smith the 94B in position the number eight of Donahue Position number 9 is the 19C of Morris, the position 10, the 47C of Tess Morris, two Morrises off that road. Then we go for the position number 11, that is Ryan Baker, the 15A from Auckland, the 6B of Dwayne Todd, off position number 12. And that looks like position number 13, the 22 of Ben Stilburn. The 3 and Z of Terence Terrell going to do it all from the back this time round. The 99C of Scammell off 15 and off good number 16. The 99 of Pazette, so two 99s off the back. Radio about to go racing. Nelson off the front. And it will be Alicia Hills going to lead this one out from Ben. Ah, uh, sorry, from Morgan Frost. Bailey in the 36 machine fires through as we have a wee bit of contact towards the back. They're getting a bit loose, but they're all firing in. Terrell makes good effort of that as he shoots past four or five cars down the back straight, making good headway as he just fires through. So watch the three and Z machine. He's got the big white back on it, making his way up through there. But the race is on. We've got Joe Hill up here looking at the daughter-in-law of Alicia Hill. Leading this one out, young Morgan Frost, the son of the Bald Eagle, Cliff Frost. The 91's gone infield, but the battle on with the Nelsonians. Then we go back to the 36 of Bailey, Ben Morgan. So it's Nelson, Nelson, Christchurch, Christchurch. The rest of them coming through. Watch for the B cars coming through as well. The sixth car of Dwayne Todd, the three and Z, making his way up through half the pack already. And it's only lap number three. But it is Morgan Frost, the seven car, the MTF finance machine. Leading this one out from the Jacks tyres, the sixth car of Alicia Hill. Here we go to Bailey as we head through to Ben Morgan as well. And the rest of the field just done spread out. Darrell makes another pass once again. Watch the three and Jet. He's on a charge. The man from Rua to Rua, Stan and Sonny will be wrapped for that one. So will Mitch Vickery, the TWS sponsored machine. As he fires through, but out in front, still Morgan Frost. He's got a handy lead from Alicia Hill. Blocking up the points. Bailey and Morgan still having a fierce battle for that minor podium spot. Then we go back to 94 of Donahue. They fire down the back straight. Todd, Dwayne Todd, the 6B. Trying to get the business done. Good fast racing as we go through to lap number seven. 
And it is a field day for the seven car, the MTF Finance car of Morgan Frost. We said to watch this guy. He leads from the front. He's hard to peg back. And Alicia Hill sitting solidly in second place. Letting the rest of the pack fight it out. Down the back straight they go. And it's not much of a change as Terrell tries to charge up from Todd. So Terrell still on the charge as they shoot through lap number 9 of 10. So the white flag only a couple away. Good fast racing. They're using plenty of track here at the Nelson Speedway. Nice and flat. Good fast racing as Morgan just slips away. Down he goes, only got a couple to go. Battle still on for the minor places. Watching Jarrell on the back of the sixth car of Todd. Can he make a stick in the next couple of laps as the white flag comes out for Morgan Frost? Alicia Hill still holding comfortably on the second. Here we go back to Bailey and Morgan. Watch for Donahue, the sixth car off Todd. Here we go back to Jarrell. But they're all chasing the seventh car. And the race winner will be the seven car of Morgan Frost. Coming over the pack now. Handicap oh, is Alicia Hill. Oh, oh, As we got one up and over. The 36 of Bailey, so we've gone check and flag, so the race will finish at that. Just trying to work out who it is that's gone up and over. The 99. Logan Scammell. Oh, Logan Scammell, mate. He's done it wrong, right on the wrong lap, too. He could have waited one more. But we have gone to a check and flag. Morgan Frost, a dominant show. And this one, Alicia Hill, Scott Bailey, Ben Morgan. And Terence Terrell from almost at the back of the back, making good headway, making some good points. Who might be getting close to that front. He is the one to watch. And this young fella, former MIP champion, out of Rotorua. As we go to our top 10, and we can tell you that Group C versus Group F, the winner was the 7N of Morgan Frost. Nelson double, the 16 of Alicia Hill was second, 36C of Scott Bailey third, had a good battle with the 84 of Ben Morgan in fourth. Then we go back to Ethan Donahue in fifth spot, Dwayne Todd just holding off the seventh spot of 3NZ, Terence Durrell. Eighth spot went to the 47C of Jess Morris, then we go to the 15A of Ryan Baker and the 22N Ben Stillborn from Nelson. Rounds up your top 10 for that second heat of round number two of the TQ action. And we look forward to the final one coming up very shortly. And that, of course, will be a Group C versus a Group F. And our first rollover of the night from our TQs. Hopefully not too much damage. <laughs> Have a look. We're about to go racing. We're going to uh, go for an interview as well. We'll hear that over the uh, loudspeaker very shortly. As we're about to go racing, green light is racing, and it is the uh, six go. car of Leach. As we go to an interview. Okay, this time we've got the 8C of Jeremy Webb here. Provisionally, joint points leader after two races through qualifying. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I knew you would say that. Yeah, I mean, there's still three heats to go. You gave Terence Durrell a really hard push in the first round of racing, then come back with a strong win. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I think if there wasn't a caution, we would have rounded him up. Um, but yeah, the caution came out and we faded a little bit, so it's something to think about. Commentators saying that you're a busy man these days with work, uh, racing life, racing up in the North Island as well. How do you balance all of that? How do you prepare for a big title like this? I'm just tired <laughs> and worn out. Um, I mean, it comes to the track and we're here racing, so it's, it's, all, it's all just behind me. It's, it's, it's not even in the back of my head anymore. Um, we'll worry about that on Sunday. Maybe that's a good way to prepare because you're not quite as intensely focused. Oh, I'm pretty focused, all right. Um, we're here for one thing. <laughs> we're, we're putting everything into it, put a lot of work into the car this year, and it's a lot better and faster than I think it's ever been. So, um, Likewise with most a lot of other guys here. So, yeah, we're, we're definitely prepared. You came gunning for that fifth straight title earlier last, uh, earlier this year at Miani. You had a late race coming together with Dwayne Todd and it, it robbed you of a podium as well. But effectively, you, you were New Zealand champion for five straight years with that COVID break. Yeah, last year was um, a year to forget. Our, we went home and our motor was rubbish. <laughs> it was way down on power and 
I don't know how we led that many laps really with what we had. So I guess it's a positive in a way as well as it's frustrating as it is. But I don't know, you know, we're here this year with number eight and we've won the thing more times than anyone else. So there's really no pressure. So yeah, we're here to have fun and, and do a job as well. Well, it's a championship that both you and Dick have both won on this track. Yeah, yep, it is. I want to get another one up on him. I'm sure you do. Um, the track's starting to come back. The stock cars actually look like they took away a lot of the black off that track. Yeah, the weight that they carry with those little wheels um, do that. Um, so I, I think the moisture will come back a little bit and the track will come back to a lot of people that, are, that may be struggling a little bit. Um, I hope it does. Um, hopefully the sprint cars don't tear it up. Um, I don't even really know why they're here this weekend to be honest, but that's what it is. And then of course tomorrow night it's going to be a totally different track again. Yeah, hopefully it sort of gets like it was last time I was here um, and there was really two lanes to run. Um, you know, I was uh, racing for a chocolate fish so I started to search around after the caution and, and actually found more speed, whereas in previous years I possibly wouldn't do that in the lead. So it was that was good to learn and hopefully we get a track like that. and. It'll give the opportunity for guys to make some moves and, and get to the front if they're good enough, you know, their cars are good enough and whatnot. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens tomorrow. And of course you can't go racing without sponsors and a good crew. Yeah, all my crew here. They didn't turn, they didn't turn up last time we were here, but they're all here now. Um, and all my sponsors, yeah, everyone, especially KT Drainage, have been the primary sponsor for 13 years, 12 years, however long I've been racing. So, without them, it's, it's we wouldn't have all the tyres we have to be throwing on this car tonight. All right, good luck for that third round, and um, I know you're going to send it, you always do. Yeah, yeah, we'll just do our best and see where we end up. Thanks, Jeremy. All right, Thank we'll restart the production saloons once again. All right. So while it's uh, getting restarted, we'll go straight back down to another interview. Okay. Right, cheers, guys. We're here with the 56K Regan Tyler Heat 4 race winner. Regan, off the front, you got to kind of win that one, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you, you got to take make the most of um, those group positions, especially with you know, the calibre of field here tonight. Um, we had a all right first heat, moving forward a couple of places, but yeah, we had to make the most of that one. And I'm pretty happy with where our car's at, so hopefully we can carry on moving forward off the back for this um, last heat. And it's your first time here at Nelson Speedway. How are you enjoying the track? Yeah, it's good. I like the how it's got a bit of character to it, and, you know, turn one and two's a bit different to your average shorter track. Um, it's taken a little bit to get used to, but, you know, um, I'm I'm feeling pretty comfortable now, and I think, I think we've got something to work with, so I'm pretty happy. And got a back draw for the last one, got to pick up a few more places in that one. Yeah, it's pretty slick out there, so it'll be hard to pass, but hopefully we can find something else that other people can't and, yeah, move forward. Obviously, all the way from Kehiki, got a few sponsors on the car you want to thank? Yeah, for sure. Um, work and safety supplies, they do heaps for us, and we wouldn't be down here without them. And, um, yeah, GFA Chartered Accountants, SP Tools, um, Ad here and Sticker Up just sorted us out a new helmet, so that's out there and looking flash. Um, abrasive Blasting. Mum and Dad, they do a heap for us. Um, we also got a few others on there that I can't quite remember right now, but everyone plays their part, you know, Viper Chases, HRD Shocks, Peter's here, you know, helping us out. Um, yeah, there's heaps of, heaps of people on board, and I can't thank everyone enough that's got us down here, because um, we wouldn't be down down here without all the support, so. Righty, good luck for the rest of the night, eh? Thank you, thank you. Righto, back to racing with our production saloons. Great to see Gabe down here. It's one of those Wellington things with a uh, bucket hat and a hoodie on at the same time. Well, this is our sixth car of David Leach leading this one from Vaughan Canelius. We go back to young Abby Carter, the 51 Fast Eddie France, and the seven car of Chrissy Wolf Patterson goes a little bit wide. Here we go back to Dave Allen. Jeff Watson through there as well. Liam Gray in the 72 machine, one of the few wheel wheel drive cars. We have floating around the South Island. 55 of Richard Ross and it will be the 16 car at the back of the pack one of our newer drivers still got the uh, high vis on the back of the car a wee bit of dust starting to be picked up off that pole light but it is young six of Dave Leach we call him young he has got a gold car but he loves driving this it just takes back his years to pick yellow machine by design and it's great to see him leading out Abby Carter from the 12 of Vaughan Cornelius to 51 of Eddie France Chrissy Wolf triple nine of Allen and Watson as they head down the back straight. Nice short sharp racing from our production saloons. As they fire around the back straights. And one going a little bit wider. It looks like the 28 E car trying to find an outside line that the sprint cars we're using. Might be right with the sprint car with the big tyres. Not too good with the thin ones as we watch the 72 car head out that way as well. The wheel will drive 
Falcon, I think it is, who are holding his Abbey Carter, just cuts the door on the 12 car of Vaughan Cornelius. Plenty of dust coming around at turn number one, so he'll get a bit of water on that. Not too distant future, but it is still young Dave Leach flying around and just look at that wear left rear wheel as he comes around, puts the weight on the front of the car. The wheel actually sits up in the air, puts a brake on, and it actually locks solid. But he's opened up a bit of a gap. Abby Carter trying to have a wee bit of a sniff down the inside. He might just close the gap, baits it up. No touch. Oh, just a little bit of a touch. Nothing too major. Let's it go. And it's good post racing on the lap number six from our production saloons. Vaughan Cornelius going around the outside of Abby Carter trying to send, get in that second place. Going to slingshot himself down the back straight as Leachy just makes that car a little bit yellow thing as wide as possible. Just tracks for Cornelius White, but he's managed to find a bit of good racetrack and will hit the lead as he goes past the start finish line and goes out to the race lead from a lead sheet. Then we go back to the 13 car, Rabbi Carter. Poor old fast Eddie in the 51 machine can't make much headway, although he's going to find a bit of an inside line as Chrissy, Chrissy Wolf shoots through. And it is a white flag out this time for Vaughan Cornelius, the 12 car. Once we got the race underway, pretty short. Oh! Oh, big hit, big hit. Eddie France just shortens up the 13 k nowhere to go, straight out the wall. Very slim into what the Harley Rob hit was on the 33 car, but you can't be doing that in production saloons. Oh, and it might, might have just been a bit of a wheel rub and a bit of a uh, tyre flick out. We won't watch the replay on that one. No, and yeah. hopefully Abby's okay. That's two of our lady drivers uh, having big hits in this particular race. Oh, we're going to Alicia Hill, the queen of the clay here at Nelson Speedway. Yeah, that's right. We're here down here with the 6N, the three-quarter midget and sprint car of Alicia Hill. Hey, Alicia, double duties tonight. That's got to be something uh, not a lot of us would do. Oh, I live for it, so doing double duties it just means twice as much fun. Hard work, but I'm really enjoying it. It must be hard work because you've got a whole d bunch of different horsepower in these different cars, haven't you? Yeah, I'm literally going from the most horsepower to the least horsepower back to back. But no, I'm really enjoying it. I'm just lucky that I've got a really big crew here tonight to help me get out there for every race. Last race finished second, just a wee bit off the pace from Morgan who just just, just at the start. Yeah, I got the start on him, but yes, I, I still got to keep hunting for more in both classes. I'm pretty happy with where we're at. It's, it's a long, long five heat format to get to the final. So we'll keep working hard and hopefully be at the pointy end. Obviously it's been a while since the New Zealand three quarter midget championship has been here. How much have you been looking forward to this one? Oh, I've been counting down for so long. We've missed the last couple due to work commitments. So to be at a New Zealand title and just be down the road from home is just, it's awesome. And to see the level of car here this weekend, we've got a lot of Auckland cars, well actually a lot of North Island cars. They've all made the trip, expensive time of year. So hats off to all those guys. It's, it's gonna make for a great show. And obviously a few sponsors on the car you wanna thank? Yep, without sponsors I wouldn't be out there. Um, big thanks to Jack's Tyres, Mum and Dad, Brian FM, Rod's Rides and Restorations, uh, Michelin, BFG, Dowie Contracting, uh, Alex, my family, um, Harris Race Cars, Glen James Jewelers, Races Edge and Collision Centre, R&J's Batteries. Without all those guys here yeah, I wouldn't be out here. Righty, good luck for the weekend, eh? You're going to need it. <laughs> yeah, cheers, thank you. Right. Oh, it's great to see Gabe there interviewing young Alicia. Of course, Alicia, very, very good at baking too. When uh, Gabe was up here in the tower, he used to have some of Alicia's baking up here. It's great to see her enjoying her racing as she always does. Uh, just before the stock cars get underway, we do have the winner of the 50 50 raffle, and that is number 2157. You can click that over in the office in the uh, corporate tower there. The MTF voucher goes to Rachel Watson. You would have received a message to head over and claim your prize. And if you've got lucky program 109, head over to the office below the uh, corporate tower there and claim your pass for the Speedway track. So that's 50-50, uh, 2157. MTF voucher, congratulations to Rachel Watson. And the lucky program is program number 109 as we get our big bad boys of stock cars and their girls of stock cars as well as they get underway to start racing and off the front it looks like it is the 17 car of Zoe Connolly Ryan Morrison there as well watch for the Baker boys Troy Glenn and someone's gone out high and wide that's Hardy Rob he's going to race the high line see if anyone tries to pick him oh. up is anyone brave as we got the big spit round from the 73 of Brenton Coleman and those guys starting to fire each other through 
bit of slippery track as they just have a wee bit of a sort out. And it is 151 of Wade Sweat. He's going to try and uh, pick up the race lead from Orion Morrison. The 991 of Rob having a bit of fun with Baker. Baker gets a wee bit of a push and shove and just stays out of the uh, Harley's way as they sort themselves through. Nice fast racing from our stock cars tonight. Looking at the 19 car of Kerry Walker down towards the back of the pack. He knows how to use the bumper. And it looks like the 98 tank of Dylan Hall is coming infield as well. It is Wade Sweeney leading this one from the 84 of Morrison, the 88 of Cleveland. Here goes Harley Rob, just a wee bit of a love tap on the 17 of Zoe Connolly. That says I'm in the way. And Jack Rarity trying to make his way up the infield along with the 224 of Lawton. So not a lot of contact happening at the moment as we've got a red light. And just trying to work out what the red light's for. Might be something on the track, oh, is it? Is that something over the far side? It looks oh. like a bit of. Or is that just a no? That's no, just a they're coming over here. I think they're just going to have a wee oh, bit of a look at the uh, 73. So just having it might be a thumbs down from the 73 machine. So no, no thumbs up. Not. He's all happy. He says no. I've just ordered me uh, KFC, me Uber driving, very shortly, and I think he's got a flat left right front. So that's the end of his race night. Uh, race anyway, Rodeo carrying on racing, walking Kerry Walker on the back of the 59 Baker car down to one and two. Car spread right around the racetrack. We keep an eye on the 416 of Rarity Harley Rob up towards the uh, front of the pack as they try and catch the 151C of Wade Sweeting. And Ryan Morrison up and amongst that as well, of course, was racing street stocks for a couple of seasons. Now back into the stock car boys. Cleveland in the third place, Harley Rob. So uh, three of the Canterbury Crushers as Zoe Connolly heads infield, parks it up. And the Crushers are one, three, and four. And as you see who's running nice and wide, just waiting for someone to be shot off. So the 89 machine quite happy just to plod along. That's Blair Brooks. And a few of the Brooks Racing family is the 48. Shoots out towards the wall, comes back in again. That'll be Matt Rollo. And just having a wee look for our other couple of new drivers. It is Sweeting leading this one quite comfortably at the moment. On lap number eight, so to white flag when he comes back around down the back straight. Watching for Morris and Cleveland having a bit of a push and shove. So Cleveland lives in Blenheim. The engine coming from Morrison from Blenheim. And the white flag is out for our race leader. Wade Sweeting, the 151 machine. Leaves largely on attack. Oh, what's wrong? Harley Rob might be looking for someone. Just watch the 991 machine. Is he a target? Not too yeah. sure. Wade Sweeting. As he looks like he's going to pick up on possibly the 67 of Baker. About to have a shot. Oh. Down three and four. Slides him up the wall. Oh. And he gets put in by the other Baker boy. Slides around the whole voice that comes back down. So the Baker boy's having a bit of fun. As Wade Sweeting takes the race win. So we're going to have... Oh, I'm looking forward to heat oh, three. Oh, here we go. That's going to stay in the memory bank. Well, I've got a feeling there's a few crusher boys out there as well that might forget about what uh, racing for the uh, chicken flag and might say, say, hey, man, we might have a bit of fun with this one in heat number three. We'll wait and see what happens. We'll wait to see whether that's over aggressive attacking. <laughs> Right, this time we've got the 12C of Kimberly Yateman. Kimberly, it's hard work out there tonight. Yeah, it is. We're actually struggling a little bit tonight. Um, there's not a lot of track, so we're just trying to do what we can and um, make some ground. It's pretty tough. What changes are you making to the car? Uh, so we have changed the right rear tyre, um, changed a little bit of stagger, just trying to move that weight around and see if we can find some traction. You're not a rookie when it comes to New Zealand Championships. You've done about 10 or 12 of these in the past. 
Yep, yep, definitely been racing for a wee while now, had my fair share of New Zealand titles. It's always good, but the pressure is still the same as when I first started racing. You've had some inside top 10 finishes too. Yeah, yep, back in 2013 we were racing at the Springs and um, managed to get a ninth place, so that was really exciting and hoping to do the same this time around. <laughs> well, tell you, to finish in the top 10 in this field would be an achievement in itself. Yeah, absolutely. Even just to qualify, I think, um, would be a huge achievement. But we're chasing that top 10 because you've got to aim higher. Do you have a favourite track? Uh, yeah, it used to be Western Springs, actually. Hopefully we'll get back there one day. I'm not sure what's happening there, but would love to. Well, I have heard that it may open for a short stint in February. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that would be really great. Fingers crossed. Yeah, awesome. You've got a good crew behind you. They're working hard on the car now, making those changes, checking tyres. Um, you want to thank them. Obviously, you want to thank your sponsors as well. Yeah, absolutely. Mum, Dad, Mick, um, Phil, my pit crew, couldn't do it without them. Obviously, it's great to have everybody here. Uh, Barbecues Direct, our main sponsor, so it's awesome to have him behind us. Really helped us get here today. We've got GE Construction, Gemmits, um Power Tools, A1 Electricians. Yeah, we've been actually really lucky with sponsors this season. Um, on Demand Rentals, yep. And um, Kennett's Farm Machinery actually just came and helped us get up here to Nelson too, so that was really awesome. Brilliant, and what is it that you love so much about Speedway? Uh, the adrenaline, speed, um, you know, that's always the fun part of it, but also the family that you make um, and all the friends and stuff that I have here, seeing them every weekend, it's just, yeah, it's awesome. Good luck for your third heat race, hopefully you can move forward and get some more points in, and hey, you never know, you might be inside top 10 tomorrow night, good luck. Yeah, cool, thanks very much. Audio quarter midgets out there on the track for their second heat of the uh, Mike Greer Holmes, Nelson Quarter Midget Series. Yep, thanks to Walking Engineering for this second heat. It looks like it's a reverse grid, so watch for the 23 of young Jack Brownleys. He'll be going to great guns, of course, his sister's racing here as well, and that is uh, Macy Brownleys, and she's new. She's only had a, uh, oh, probably a dozen or so race meetings. Of course, the quickies, I think, are off the back there. It is reverse grid, so the 48 and the 54. Watch them to come through the grid. Watch for the 18 car of Conley Webley. And he won the South Island Mini Stock Championship at Ellesmere the other weekend. As we line them up, lights going green. So five laps of quarter midship racing. Mika Rawson trying to get the low line. Jack Brownies are around the outside. Watch for the 54 of Jackson Clark. Regular features, Kiana Taylor Martin in the 12th machine. Absolute dynamite young driver and the 71 of Darcy Rasmussen got the seal in the car but lives up here in Nelson and another great supporter as we watch the 18 car of Conley Webley these guys spread themselves out in 10 car of course one of our newer drivers Jack Ryan son of Mark Ryan who used to race the uh, saloon cars out of Christchurch now making his trade up here in Nelson as well so watching young fellow he's only his second or third meeting here at the Nelson Speedway track, honey knee high to a grasshopper. That's the 32 of Macy Brown. He's about to get caught by her brother Jack. 54 car of Clark. Then we go back to Monika Rawson, 71 of Darcy Rasmussen. Taylor Martin having a good lock there as you watch some of the speeders towards the back. And looking for the 54 of Cohen Thompson coming through. Lakin's through there as well in the 48 of a Lockie Martin just uh, struggling at the back of the pack. He hasn't made too much headway as the uh, young fellas and girls try and get through the back markers. Lap number four, so the white flag is out for our race leader, young Jack Brownlee, short and sweet, as we say, from the corner midget grade. Thanks to Mike Greer Holmes Nelson for this uh, heat number two of the series, round number two. And it will be young Jack Brownlee's will pick up the checkered flag from the 54 of Clark, then we go back to Monika Rawson, the 71 of Darcy Rasmussen, 67 of Lake and Thompson, Cohen Thompson making good weight way as well, oh, along with Conley Webley, and it looks like have we got an incident over the back there. Yeah, it looks like someone's parked up there, I didn't see what happened. I don't no. know. Oh, it might be a bit of debris on the track, is it? Just having a no, wee bit. No, it's a car. Guy, oh, I can't see it behind the MTF voucher flag. Ah, oh, oh, there we go, the, the MTF flag of what happened.
Standard and Decorators are a long established Canterbury company covering the whole of the South Island who love to support their local community. If you require expert advice from design to application, then Shane has the expert team to ensure your next project is hassle free with a professional finish. Floor to ceilings, walls to roof, inside outside, commercial or residential. Let our team take the hassle out of your decorating. Give us a call now on 027 Painting. That's 027 724 6846. Anderton Decorators, we have you covered. It doesn't matter how hard the job is, we suck it up and get it done. No matter how dirty our hands have to get, we suck it up and get it done. Suck it up, suck it up, suck it up. Out for sake, suck it up, suck it up, suck it up. Suck it up. Suck it up and get it done with suckitup.co.nz But of course the fences have got a little bit higher this time. Why do we watch these young guns? Corey McQuillan and Connor Rang and the two Nelsonians off the front of this one as we go racing of 23 laps. And it will be the 57 machines going to lead them through. Duster already flying on a drying track here at Nelson Speedway. But we want to look forward to 23 laps of a pure sprint car action as we watch the 12 car and McQuillan Duff's already made himself in the second spot. He'll head out after Connor Rangi watching for the 46 machine of Joel Myers Jr. And he's sitting in fourth spot. Here comes the 79 of Guilford. He's challenging for that fourth spot. Then we go back to the 95 of Bourne. Down the back straight they go. Yulenberg just getting a bit of a tag from the 75 of Brenham. As Mum looks on to young Connor Rangi, leading them out in the Dalton's machine. Lap number three, doing 13 second laps at the moment. So the track just a little bit slower for these feature races as who's getting high and wide. It will be the 46% of Joel Wise trying to find an outside line. Prepared to run the high line, six down low. And he comes into one and two. So these guys trying to dial themselves in for the 23 laps. Corey McQuillan holding third place as Duff sets himself out past young Connor Rangi. And Connor doing the flying one. Here he goes. It looks like the battle's starting to come on. Our South Island champion catching the 57 machine as you watch the break this in the middle of the tail glow on the 19 machine. Good pictures they come through. And the, uh, car the carbon fibre brakes on these sprint cars pushing 900 on cubic horsepower going round the lap number seven and ring he's got a fight on his hands if Duff takes the low line these two battle on around they go workmates over the past couple of years as the sprint cars doing the laps Alicia Hill in the six machine happy to be doing a battle as we watch the 75 mile Brenham Crouch having a battle with Eulenburg as our leaders start to come up towards the back markers and Rangi's managed to open up a bit of a gap on Duff once again. Coming up to lap number 10 of the 23. And we are still doing the low 13s. No one's hit a 12 at the moment. In fact, just breaking away, but still consistent racing. Good flat surface here at Milestone Homes, top of the South Speedway. And our tribute to Paddy North goes into lap number 11. And just watching the tyres go. Watch a little wee bit of white foam as we've got a spin up from the 15 car of Steve Duff Jr. No damage done at the moment and we will go caution after lap number 11 and we've got Jamie Duff just pushed into the high 12s so he's got some speed to burn only points two of a second between Connor Rang and Steve Duff on their laps and their laps were done on quickest ones through the sevens so the track just dying away so we'll get the uh, push car out to try and fire up the 15 machine He'll come off the back, Steve Duff Jr. But the Dalton machine under pressure from the 19. Of course, these, as the track goes off, these guys can adjust their cars, adjust the bias. They've got a couple of levers in the cars. And while it's under caution, I'll just have a bit of a think about what they're going to do. Lights are out. Here we go again. Young Conorangi representing the Nelson Club. Great to see him back here in the Nelson. Based in Christchurch as they go racing once again. And the green light goes as we go to lap number 12 of 23 for the Paddy North Memorial, heat number one. And as Conor Rangi leads him through again, 
Just having a look there, John Myers Jr. just coming a little bit unstuck as he struggles with the pace here. Won the feature race that we're up in the last little weekend for the War of the Wings as they just undercut each other. And it is the 79 machine of Guilford gets it past the 12 car of Corey McQuillan, moves up into third place. Of course, it is reverse grit for the next 10 rounds. If we go to lap number 13, just to 10 to go. Down to nine now as they split the laps down. Connor Rangi down to a 12.85. So he's starting to find a bit more pace in the 57 machine. As they shoot through, Duff still cold in second place from Guilford. Then we go back to McQuillan. We go back to John Myers Jr. The 95 of Caleb Vaughan, the 75 of Crouch. We go back to Eulenburg, Steve Duff Jr. and Alicia Hill. As they just fire around 16, so just the seven laps to go for this first heat of the Paddy North Memorial. We'll see them back tomorrow for the Sunshine Classic. As our sprint cars complement our New Zealand TQ title. And the car's just happy to do laps. As Rangi just shoots through and starts to find the high line. Good black slick down there. The track's still nice and flat. No worry about lumps in the Nelson track. Lap number 18, about to go to 19, just the four laps to go for Connor Rangi. Still doing good fast laps as the field just content to slip round. Not too much contact as they do spread themselves far and wide as we watch the 75 just trying to sneak underneath the 89 of Vaughan. Can't quite do it, sorry, the 95 of Vaughan. As they circulate round, so lap number 20. And there will be a white flag out next time round for Connor Rangi. As he heads down the back straight, he's got Alicia Hill. He's almost caught Alicia Hill in about three laps from the restart. We'll see the white flag as Connor Rangi was off the front and can't be caught. As he just sits quietly behind the 16 car of Alicia Hill. He will complete the first feature race with the race win. Second will go to Steve Duff from the 79 of Guilford. Then we go back to the 46 of Joel Myers, the 12 of Corey McQuillan, the 95 of Caleb Ford, the 75 of Brennan Crouch. Tony Eulenberg and each help, Steve Duff Jr. will finish the race meet, a race of 23 laps. Well, Dan, we're gonna reverse the grid order for the next one, so he may have been able to win it off the front. He's gonna have a lot of work to do off the back wall, be wall Connor Rangi on the next one. We look forward to seeing that one as we see a reverse order for their second one. We've got a couple more races to go before that happens. Of course, it will be up next. I think we've got stop uh, quarter midgets for their feature race. Uh, then we go back to stock cars and sprint cars. Rightio, so we're going to head downstairs to Mike Wilson, who's going to do a bit of a top 10 update on the, the behave. Oh, we can talk to him, can we? Oh, great. Oh. Marvellous. Oh, Hi, we Mike. can? Yep. How are you, Mike? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, guys. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Right, so you got the update on the top 10 for us? Yeah, Amber Court Motel, after two rounds of qualifying for this NZTQ title, it couldn't really get any tighter. And if we look at the top on 31 points each, defending champion Aaron Humble and a four-time national champion Jeremy Webb. Just two points further back, 2NZ Caden Barker, and we've seen how good he was on the track in that second round. Fourth place in points, uh, it's a tie for that with 56k Regan Tyler and also the 36c of Scott Bailey. And I know that was a popular third place for Bailey in that second round because I was standing obviously next to his crew. Um, six in points, 70 and Morgan Frost, what a win. He stormed away from Alicia Hill as if she dropped a chain. He just drove away with that heat race. Uh, seventh in the points, the 5M of Peter Honeybell. We know how quick he's going to be over the weekend. And eighth is 8k Dylan Cook. Ninth place, another former two-time national champ, the 6B of Dwayne Todd. And in 10th equal, well, you win a race, you have not such a good second round race, you drop all the way to 10th in the points. It's 3NZ, Terence Durrell, and the 84C of Ben Morgan. That's the provisional roundup of the top 10 for the Amber Court Motel New Zealand TQ Championship qualifying after two rounds.
Well, it's a good thing about Terence Durrell is that he come right off the back in that second heat, so he actually moved up quite a few places in that second heat. Um, he's probably got a couple of front row grids coming up, which will put him back right up in contention. But maybe he passed a few uh, drivers in that last heat uh, from the back. Here's the grids. So we've got, it uh, looks like, be Jamie Booth off the front with Jack Rawson in position two. We've got Hodgson, 12k, out of Kitty Kitty. Sean Cook, well, he'll want to make up for that DNF in the last heat. Then we've got Cameron McKenzie out of Greymouth. Then we go back to the 17G of Dylan McGregor, I think that's his name. Then we go back to Seoul out of Christchurch. Tyler Pennington out of Auckland in position eight. And then we go back to Smith out of Wellington. Jeremy Webb off position 10. John T. Austin, well, he hasn't had a good night tonight. Two DNFs, he'll be desperate for some points. James Thompson off grid 12 of the 82 GM. And near the back, we've got Dunning, Corkle, and the 1NZ of Aaron Humble off grid 15. So, bit of work to do for Aaron Humble in that one as we get set for the TQs for their final three heats of the night. They've still got two more heats to run tomorrow to find our top 18 for, uh, and then the next two go through to the Ripper Charge. And uh, of course, uh, that, oh, look who's come up to the commentary box for a super stock driver, Caleb McNabb, is up here. Oh. <laughs> Not bad. Uh, they, did you, did you come all the way back from Australia under a 501, didn't you? Was that the one? <laughs> of course, it's uh, been living over in Australia for uh, the first, last few months. It's good to have him actually back home. It makes it a lot easier than uh, get through the time zone. Right over with us, our TQs are back out here again. Good to see Aaron Humble. He's going to have a lot of work to do off the back uh, of this one. As we see the good positions come through. And of course a good dry track, the sprint cars, just to get that shine off it. It does look a little bit black, but you can put the cars anywhere. And for those that ever saw the New last New Zealand midget title here, it was just probably some of the best, most purest racing you'd ever see in the midget car racing. It was off the charts. We just wish we could have the midget cars back here at Nelson. Can't quite do it at the moment, but it is a fantastic track for this style of race car. And I'm looking forward to, to this one. Just having a wee look as they line themselves up. The light's still on. So we've got a couple of vehicles out on the track. Lights are out. Lights are out. There we go. Down the back straight they go. And there's a couple of pink machines at the back. Yellow. Pink machines at the front. Yellow at the back. Blue's in the middle. And a couple of greenies here as well. So quite a colourful bunch. But it is the 46C machine. That's going to lead them through. It looks like we're going to go three or four wide into one and two. And the referee quite happy as they shoot themselves down the back straight. The eight car of Jack Rawson leads them from Jamie Booth. Then we go back to Sean Cook as they fire around. Watch for the speed to come through the back. The eight car of Jeremy Webb out there. Of course, the one in set of Humble. These two did battle a couple of weeks ago. Webb coming out the better of the two. And they, of course, will be short odd favourites to try and get low numbers once again on this racetrack come tomorrow night as they sort themselves out. And a bit of time spent in the Nelson circuit on a drying track will be to an advantage. As the eight car of Rawson doing the business at the moment, looking great guns from Sean Cook. Then we go back to Jamie Booth. Jeremy Webb's moved up the fourth from Hodson, the 12k car. As they shoot down the back straight. And we've got a bit of a mis mix up. Who oh, spun it up? Someone spun it up, got off the track. So it will be a caution. And that was a pretty quick caution that Jaden Corkle got spun up. So hopefully you'll put him back in there. One of the two competitors with James Thompson. And they've been uh, battling over many years, both in Greymouth and here in Nelson. Having a wee check here. Uh, where are we? As we do have lights out. Oh, racing once again. Jack Rawson's going to lead them through from the 18th of Cook. Booth there as well. Webb, round the outside he goes. And moves himself up to third place on the lap number four. So the battle on is a, just on the restart to do a bit of a slight job. Looks like the 97 machines come to a halt. Will he be able to make it to the infield? Yes, he does. Looks like the whole side of the rear ends 
got to a problem, managed to make it off safely, so we stay under the green, and we got a new race leader, this Yates car of Jeremy Webb, the former four-time New Zealand champion, won his first title here on the Nelson track some six years ago. Will he make it a, another New Zealand title? As we see the two eights make a number 18 in the third place. As we watch the one in set of Aaron Humble, just having a look as he makes his way up through the field as well. So he is making his way up to try and get some valuable points. James Thompson up to ninth spot as the field still bunched up. But out in front, it is Jeremy Webb. He is the one to catch in this round. So far, Jack Wilson doing a sterling job of holding back uh, Cook as we go then to Jeremy Booth. And it is a lap number eight of 12. So we're well, two thirds of the way through this race. Just have a look there, there's a slow car coming through the back markers. As a slight troop watching the one instead of Humble, he's on a charge, made his way up the third from the back of the pack. As we see, yep, it is the eight car of Rawson. Something's gone wrong with the eight machine after being in the top three. As we go on to lap number 10, so the white flag will be out next time round for the eight car of Jeremy Webb. Got himself a handy lead as a Rawson comes in field. White flag out now. Rest of the field coming round. It is Cook in second. Here we go back to Humble. Good battle on for the minor places. The 46. Oh, oh just catches the car. Have we got one over? No, they managed to. Oh, oh. Just about. A couple of back markers getting caught. Nowhere to go. And there was a racing incident. Not quite sure who the cause of that one was, but certainly two cars coming together. There should be a good few from the Pit TV coming up shortly. No, missed that one. No, that was right down the back, so they've missed that one. But that's not a problem because we're watching the race there. The Jeremy Webb just opening up the gap. And it just shows him he knows what he's doing on this track. He's done it before. He's won plenty of features. In fact, he's almost unassailable a couple of years ago. And then they started to catch him. He, he was the marker point. And slowly but surely, the rest of the fields are slowly coming to catch up Webb. And he knows he's got a battle on his hands this weekend. He's focused, knows what he has to do. But it is Webb that's going to set the pace. He's going to keep it nice and slow. Then he's going to gather the speed up on four and try and break a bit of a gap so no one can get the advantage on it. Does it well, stays low as he fires back round. White flag out, so she's the one lap dash. Here comes Humble. Got the door shut from the 18 machine of Cock. Says, mate, I can bank the points in third place. It's better than a 10F. And it will be a race win to the eight car of Jeremy Webb. He picks up another race win on this one. The yellow lights have come out, so we can tell you pretty much the top ten is all that's going to finish. And it will be the 8C of Jeremy Webb from Sean Cook. Here, one in set of Aaron Humble in third place. Then we go back to the 46C of Jamie Booth. Fifth spot goes to the 12K of Harry Hodson. 19 on Tuesday. The 6 6th spot will be the 17G of Dylan McGregor. 7th spot, the 4B of Bart Dudding. And, so, yep. and then we'll go back to the 81W of Damon Smith. The 66N of Jalen Corkland. And got the 46 GM of Cameron McKenzie. Is your top 10? James Thompson in the 11th spot. Jack Rawson. Cameron Soul. Two cars parked up on the infield. That is that heat done and dusted. Go for the grids. Here we go. This heat it will be the two instead of Caden Barker off position number one. The 99C of Scammell off two. The 22N of Stillburn off three. 
the 11 K of Crawford off at position number four. Position number four was the 91B of McIntosh, the 38C of Finley off position six. Kimberly Yeatman, the 12C off position seven, the 19C of Morris off grid eight. Grid nine goes to the 57C of the young Dylan Forsey, the 11N of Joe Keane off position 10, the 6N of Alicia Hill off at grid 11. Grid 12, the 3NZ of Terence Durrell, watch for him coming up through the grants. The 23 of Dylan Bimson, hoping for a better run on position 13, hopefully it's not unlucky. Ben Morgan, the 84C on position 14, position 15, the 94B of Donoghue, and 8K of Cook is off position 16. That is your 16 cards for this one. This will be a dynamite one as the lights are out, about to go racing. So here we go, another heat of the TQ title. Away we go racing. And it looks like it will be the 2NZ of Caden Barker who leads us round. So he'll fire into turns one and two. They'll fire down the back straight now. It's going to be the 2NZ of Caden Barker who's going to lead us round. It looks like the 11 car is in there as well. That's going to be Royden Crawford. As they all fire into turns one and two, they get through nice and safely. Down the back straight they go. It's a 2NZ of Caden Barker. Looks like it will be from the 11 car of Royden Crawford. Then we go back to the 99 of Skimmel. Then it's going to be Ben Stillborn in a bit of trouble here with Forzi. Got a bit of pressure on him as they work their way down the back straight. Caden, Caden Barker looks like he's on a mission. He's got a little bit of contact. Oh, one spun up manages to uh, hold it together as they work their way through down the back straight they go it's still Caden Barker leading this one out from the 11 of Royden Crawford then we go back to the 22 of Ben Stillborn the 57 of uh, Dylan Forsey watch the very inset of Terence Durrell he's a ninth place they work their way through down the back straight they go again a little bit of argy bargy going on at the back but the two NZ of Barker still in control of this one Looks like it will be from the 11 car of Royden Crawford. Then we go back to Ben Stillborn. Then it looks like it's going to be Dylan Forsey, Logan Skimmel, Alicia Hill, Aaron Finlay as they work their way through. But Caden Barker has got his bows in front and he's away as there's a wee bit of a battle pack going on behind us. They work their way down the back straight now. It's still going to be the 2 NZ of Caden Barker. We'll watch the back markers. I swear it starts getting interesting as they all sort of bunch up on this track. Hill's sort of going nowhere at the moment, but it is the uh, free NZ of Durrell. Watch him, he's still in ninth place, trying to make his way up. But the two NZ of Barker, is way out in front from the 11 old Crawford. Then we go back to the 22 of Ben Stillborn, as they all fire through, almost free wide, can't into turns one and two, that never ends, never ends well. But it is a 2 NZ of Caden Barker, from the 11 of Royden Crawford. Then we're going to go back to Ben Stillborn, Dylan Forsey. Still a nice battle pack going on behind us. This is where it can get wrong very, very quickly as they work their way through. Terence Durrell, oh, we got way up and over. Big rollover on the infield. And I think that's the 84 car of Ben Morgan. Went for a bit of a tumble. That was a big rollover. I think it is. There might be the 84, of, yes it is, the 84 of Ben Morgan straight out of the car. But that was a big tumble he took. Good to see he straight out the car. Oh, that was a bit of a tumble he took. Yeah, no, certainly didn't look good. But he's, uh, yeah, as you said, looking like he's actually no damage done to himself here. I think he's just trying to work out what's happened to the car. Who's he actually collected? Because there's another car parked on the infield there as well. Here's the replay. We're going to so see the replay. Who did he collect? So he's just sort of oh. collected by himself. It's the 23 car. Benzaman. Do you want So they've had a bit of a coming Come together. together. Got yeah. caught round. Got sideways. Spun it over. Radio racing this time. And away we go. And it's a 2NZ of Caden Barker leading us through. Here comes a 57 of Forzi trying to find his way into uh, that third spot. But it's a 2NZ of Caden Barker. It's a Terrence Durrell goes right on the high side. I think he might have dropped a couple of spots there. But it is the 2NZ of Caden Barker leading this one out as they work their way down the back straight now. He might have gone backwards a little bit. We'll wait and see as they all fire in to turns three and four. It's still going to be white flag will come out for the 2NZ of Caden Barker. 
Now in the back straight they go. Oh, a little bit of Argy Bargy going on in the back, but it's going to be a heat win to the two NZ. Oh, Caden Barker takes out heat, another heat win. And they all fire through, so it's going to be Caden Barker, Royden Crawford, Dylan Forsey, Ben Stillborn, Logan Skimmel, Kimberly Yeatman, Alicia Hill, Aaron Finlay, Ethan Donahue, and Terence Durrell, your top 10. So there we go. Yep, Barker, the two NZ. He'll be racked with that off the front. And uh, that will bag some valuable points for him. Royden Crawford, Dylan Forsey, well, keep your eyes on him. He's one of those dark horses. Logan Skimmel, good to see him up in fifth after rolling in the last heat. Kimberly Yeatman, Alicia Hill up in seventh. That will do her points really well. Aaron Finlay, Ethan Donahue, and the free NZ of Terence Durrell. Durrell only dropping a couple of spots. Grid draw for this heat. And it looks like it will be McGregor out of Napier. Then we go back to Smith. Ryan Barker in the 15A. Mark Bazette off position number four. Position five will be Tyler Warnock from the 33C. Maya Nicholson off row six. Finlay off position seven in the 83C. The 12N of Graham Porter off position eight. Then it looks like we're going to have Ethan Smith in the 91 seat, all position 9, John Schuster in the 62 car, Jess Morris in the 47, and Dudding off position number 12. And then it looks like off the back it will be Alicia Hill. Got a bit of work to do at the back. We've got Tyler, the 56K, Dwayne Todd, 6B, and 36C off position number 16. So there we go, that is heat number 9. The last heat of our TQs for the Amber Court Motel New Zealand three quarter midget title. As I say, two more heats tomorrow to determine our 18 that goes straight through to the final, and then we find our other other cars through our Ripper Charge, and then of course that big 25 lap feature to find a New Zealand champion. Oh. Points will be added up, positions will be added up. We're going to look at to see where everyone's sitting. What they're going to do. For tomorrow night, as you go racing three wide into one and two, and they just battle through. And the 27 W of Smith, McGregor, and Baker all having a bit of a challenge as they start Ooh. to do the old slight jobs. Who's gone out wide? Someone's gone out wide, managed to correct that it was the four car. But looking for the speedsters to come through this one. Down the back there, watch for the 33 of Warlock. He needs to uh, find some good points for this. The current Nelson champion watching for the uh, 15A of Baker. Looking for some points as well, just to bank them through these five rounds. There's a wee bit of a tip for on the back of the eight car. Sorry, the sixth car of... Wayne Todd just straightens himself back up. But uh, just watching as a 27 machine from Wellington. Good to see the Wellington cars from the quarter midgets. Used to have the old mini sprints at Wellington. They've gone from there, but it looks like they've replaced them with a couple of TQs. Of course, they have the old modifieds here. They're going great guns at Wellington as well. As the 33 of Warlock looks to charge down to try and pack up the top three. As you watch Baker McGregor in front of them, throw a blanket over these three as our race leader just sails away with it, Vaughan Smith 91 looking to try and make headway, Ethan Smith from Christchurch, Blake Finley and John Schuster then your time on this Nelson track just trying to find the race line no one opening up a big gap at the moment, all content to race through, watching for the 7 car of Morgan Frost, trying to stick his way through just got to make sure he's at the right place at the right time. Two flip many times oh. as we go. Caution. Got one spun up there on the pole line. 
Looks to be the 12th car of Graham Porter. And he'll head to the back of the pack. They'll single file themselves back in again. The 56 of Regan Tyler. Not making much headway at the moment. North Island champion towards the back of the pack. These guys, of course, haven't raced this track before, so they haven't seen what it does in the latter stages of the uh, meeting. But less grip on there. Just got to set that car up nicely. Make sure they get all the horsepower through those rear tyres. No use spinning the tyres for Endless going nowhere. As it looks like they seem to have sorted themselves out. The light's still on. The referee's just having a wee bit of a look. So Dwayne Todd also another one that's uh, got to try and move up a little bit more. Still a pressure on the top three. Vaughan Smith. Got this one at the moment quite comfortably. Though it's close back up. Watch for the 74 of Ryan McGregor. Orange lights still on. Hopefully they'll go out this time round. In the hands of Mike Glover, our referee for the weekend. Lights are out. He's happy. We're about to go racing once again. And Vaughan Smith's going to lead them off with the green light racing. Watch for the 15 of Baker. Trying to get that inside line. Warnock's going to go wide. So a few of them have tried to chase the outside line. Got plenty of speed around the outside, but you've also got to watch the distance. So you stick low and slow and you go wide and high. As we watch the 56 of Tyler trying to find the outside line. Not going anywhere but backwards as Warnock, he's found a bit of speed around the outside line, sticks into second spot. Going to try and hunt down the 27 machine. Will he be able to do it with four laps to go? Around they go. And we're just watching Porter as he comes through. So they shoot round, not too far away from the white flag. Is Smith going to come under pressure from the Nelson Club champion of Tyler Warnock, starting to get some good grip as they get a little bit loose. Schuster just getting loose. Dwayne Todd sneaking back as well. So just trying to stay out of trouble, just trying to bank those points. And Smith's under pressure, and there's the white flag out. Can Warnock pick up the back tail of Smith, or is he going to just continue to try and sit on that second spot? The top four just opened themselves up, nothing to the happen, but Smith will pick up a checkered flag from a Warlock. Then we go back to the 74 of McGregor. Baker comes through as well. Oh, and we got a couple oh. over. Dual rollovers past the checkered flag. And we got two upside down, a bit of smoke coming out there. And not too sure who they are. We've seen the rescue vehicles over there. Plenty of black smoke, just a bit of oil. Wipes off a very hot car. The rescue crew will possibly get to get their car upright. And just trying to work out who it is. The race has concluded. And the rollovers start to tick over. Uh, cars 
a little bit damaged in the last one. As we get to go racing, and it will be the Grand Math car of Liam Gray's going to lead them through. Watch the two green machines. It is a 55 of Richard Ross on the outside of Jeff Watson. You go back to the sixth car of Leach. 69 of Brendan Byrne, the 51 of Eddie Franz. Vaughan Cornelius out there as uh, we watch a couple of cars go white. A bit of a squeeze play, Liam Gray with a big white, big machine going high and wide. Hopefully he'll be able to stay off the wall. Hasn't quite, and there we go. Smacks the wall, something chronic. And that'll bring out the caution. So probably, I'm not sure if he completed one lap. Might have done. Might just continue well, through. Just, I think they did. We well, have been from Greymouth uh, tasting a bit of concrete. Uh, yes, no, he's been uh, racing in Grey Matthew. He was over in Christchurch as well on the weekend. So hopefully he's managed to uh, not do too much damage to that machine. Of course, they've got the uh, production use in Grey Matthew as well. They've got uh, six young drivers out there learning their trade. And I think we've got youth mini stocks tomorrow night. We'll get the sheets sent out. Of course, our lovely... Secretary Steph doing a marvellous job there over the last two or three days getting everything together. Right over our racing, Watson's going to lead them through from Richard Ross. Then we go back to Davey Leach, Eddie Franz in the 51 machine. Vaughan Cornelius is going to try and stick around the outside. And Alan will try and do the same on the 69 machine of Brendan Byrne. So a few of the cars quite happy to race the high line. A few of them quite happy to stick down low. But the most successful one at the moment is the 87 machine of Jeff Watson. has gone out to a handy lead at the moment. Leachy's moved into second place. And then we got three wide as Eddie Franz shows Vaughan Cornelius to Wall Vaughan says, no nah, mate, I'm going to go back down to the pole line. It's a lot less dangerous down that way. And he's just trying to make sure he's going to stay with all his panels intact and will be the 12 car as he tries to step past the 55 and 51 of Franz and Ross. Dave Allen in the triple nine car moving the one spot up. There's Jeff Watson in the 87 machine. Sneaks through and just watching Richard Byrne go high and wide. that go through plenty of things happening on the racetrack just watching the 12 car of Vaughan Cornelius he's a, I think he's just trying to work out which is the safest line to get past the 51 machine and try and bank the points Watson out to a handy lead with a leech Dave Leach in the, the six car quite happily running around goes a little bit wide he's going to open the door for the 51 machine but he shuts it just as quickly as Leachy goes wide. So he's running a couple of different race lines. Vaughan Cornelius just says, mate, not quite sure what the older fellas are up to. I'll just sit behind them and stay safe and have a couple more racing days. David Allen doing likewise as we watch young Chrissy Wolf in the seven machine. Battle away round in the back of the pack. Cornelius goes wide once again, drops back a little bit. As we go into lap number eight, white flag out now for the 87 of Watson. As Leachy holds on to second place, the challenge going in on the final lap. As they short through, here we go. Vaughan says, mate, I've got to find a way through. Can I go low? Can I go wide? They're all going, pushing through. We're going to go three wide for second spot. Who's going to win it? Oh, it might be Leachy just holding on from Eddie Franz. Vaughan Cornelius. And David Allen, so very, very quick, 0 0.34, 0.19. So we've seen a couple of close finishes over the last few weeks. Uh, Jeff Watson will win that one uh, quite happily. Uh, he'll finish in first place. Second will go to the 16 of Dave Leach, Eddie Franz in the 51. From the 12 end of Vaughan Cornelius, the triple nine of Dave Allen in the fifth. Uh, Richard Ross, sorry, Richard Ross, the 55 in the sixth spot. Seven goes to 69 of Brendan Byrne. 17 of Chrissy Wolf, Lee Patterson in the 28E, and pretty much the last one in the race, all 10 cars, 16N of Caleb Hebb. That is our final production saloon race of the night. And it is looking at this one here, possibly sprint cars lined up next. As we give the mean green machine, the 87. A little easier ride. Oh, up. the corner just feature, yep. is it? Oh, there yep. we go, the 87. Give him a hand, folks. 
It is Jeff Watson, an absolute uh, mean machine on the track, and not only that, but he's also one that helps out the club. He's always at all our working bees. Of these guys just in the first start of the season campaign. A few of them have been racing for three or four seasons. Wait to see what they move up to. Lights are out. Ready to go racing. Green lights on. And it's the two Thompson boys leading through. Cohen Thompson will seek into the race seat. Big battle between him and young Jack Brownlees. First and second at the last series event in Ellesmere. Watch for young Conley Webley as well. As the speedsters find your way through, watch for Clark, Yako, Monika Rawson, 23 of young Bailey Benmanson. As they head down the back straight, seven laps this time round, so a bigger race for this feature race of the South Island Quarter Midget Series, Port Trust by Mike Rear Homes. And our back mark is already having to uh, see the leaders stick past and it looks like the 48 oh poor Lockie our defending series champion gonna have a DNF in this one something wrong with the car he'll be back out in the mini stock tomorrow but it is Cohen Thompson take note Steve Dad the boy might be wanting that modified sooner than you think as he shoots around opens up a bit of a lead from his brother Jack Brownlees can't do much. The access man sponsor machine, Conley Webley there as well. Here we go back to young Darcy Rasmussen. Monika Rawson, the 54 of Clark, 23 of Buddy Benmanson. As they fire through lap number four, so still got three to go. Back mark is not playing too much to play. Can we go from start to finish with no caution? Macy Brownlee's one of those back markers, still fresh as a daisy. In the corner, Midget Great watching the brother run round, but it's all Cohen Thompson change of position for position number two. And Jack Brownlee sets in after Cohen. Brother Lakin will be in the third spot. Here we go back to Conley Webley. The express loop just here by the Richmond lights. And a great ride up in the dirt track a couple of episodes ago. As they shoot down the back straight, should be the Checkered flag is out. There we go. Short, sharp racing from our corner midgets and the race win going to Cohen Thompson. Two wins from two rounds in the series. Back Brownlees will play bridesmaid once again. Those positions reversed in the first four, first four meetings so far this year. Lake and Thompson, he'll be right up on the points as well. Here we go back to the Connolly Webley in fourth spot. Darcy Rasmussen in fifth spot, the 71 C car. Here we go back to Monika Rawson, the 8 N car in sixth. The seventh will go to Bailey Benson, the 23 N car. 54 C in eighth spot of Jackson Clark. Brody Morris, the 62 C in the ninth spot. And the 10 of the 10th spot, 72 C of a Brock Clark. Good racing from our corner midgets for our South Island Series round and our poor. Series champion Lockie Martin parked up on the infield. Hopefully, nothing too major with that. We might see him in the mini stock tomorrow night. to uh, Mike Wilson who's got an in interview. Over to you Mike. Cheers guys. 27W Vaughan Smith. He's not only fast on the track, he's fast at getting out of his race suit as well. Mate, you needed that race when it's put you up into the top five. Yeah, yeah, it was um yeah, it was just all go. I knew it was grid two. I got to set the you know set the pace and as soon as it went green I was just fucking not looking back. Yep. Pace is so hot out there in every race. Yeah, yeah, you just gotta keep it on the pole line, otherwise they're just gonna, you know drop back but it's a bloody good track it's bloody fast but yeah I'm getting the hang of it. You are definitely getting the hang of it what are, what are the characteristics that you like about it? Oh it's so odd it's like a D shape but it's you know you learn the most when you're doing something new so it's good very good. You do a lot of racing out of Miani but you wouldn't find two more different tracks? Nah nah this is so different from what I've ever come across but it's I bloody love it it's good. What were your expectations coming here this weekend? 
Oh, well, I mean, last year I had a big role, so this year my aim was just get into the top and qualify, but it looks like I'm doing pretty well, so. Well, you're at the sharp end of the field. That's where you need to be, especially to, to get through into that top 18. No one wants to go into a rapid charge tomorrow. Oh, no, nah, I can't do with that pressure again. <laughs> Quickly, sponsors. Oh, the Skylight Specialist, and I just want to thank Harris and my crew for everything they've done for me. All right, mate, thanks for thank the chat. Thank you. See ya. Radio stock car time. Yeah, thanks, Mike, for that interview. Good to catch up with some of these TQ drivers. But it's stock car time. The rollover money hasn't gone yet. Is it going to go in this race? We'll have to wait and see. Not too sure, but I can tell you that uh, the 77 sprint car driver was disqualified and given an eight-day stand-down, so he's just booked his flight for eight days in sunny Fiji. Courtesy of Speedway New Zealand, so that's why we haven't seen the sprint car driver eight-day stand-down for that one. That's what I was trying to follow up on. Stock cars, here we go now. We saw the Baker boys, Harley Rob. Harley Rob's got some mates here in the form of the Canterbury Crushers. So I'll wait to see what unfolds here. Jack Rarity off the front. He might be hard to catch from there. As we wait to see what unfolds in the stock cars. We haven't had any money given away. But this will be the one to watch as we watch the 911 already under constant attack from Kerry Walker. And there's absolute carnage. So we're watching to see the slide jobs. We're waiting to see who's going to play possum. <laughs> Braden Lawson parked up on the wall. As we see, Harley oh. Rob got the shot from Kerry Walker. So it looks like the Baker boys have got a few friends. Ryan Morrison gets back out on track. But out in front, quite happily playing, is Jack Rarity. Here but we go. Watch, watch. Here we go. Bam. Oh, that's a big bounce. <laughs> That's a very sore drunk. Who was that? That was Troy Cleveland sent him in that way. And his sparks coming from underneath the car. So no doubt something's gone broken here. I think the red light will come on. We'll go and check that driver out. Lots of sparks coming up. i got a feeling he might be uh, asleep. Yep, he's asleep. So just stay back from the fence, folks. Stay back from the fence, folks. So just to keep, keep an eye on that one. We watch the 88 seat of Cleveland. So just watching a few highlights here come through. So just waiting for the pit gate to get closed, folks, and we'll get underway very shortly with the uh, stock cars once again. Oh, good to see our uh, street stock driver, Josh Atkinson, on the gate tonight. 71 in street stock. He's on, been on the gate all night tonight. Good to see. Doing a good job. Rightio, yep. here we go. Back to racing. And our race leader is the 416 of Jack Rarity. We'll watch for where to see Hardy Rob and who's having a bit of a bash where. There we go. Oh, oh, oh we he's got gone one. up. And who's that been put in? Hardy Rob's got uh, Kerry Walker, is it? Yeah. So Kerry Walker's parked up. Will be a red light come on. The back is exposed. So there we go. Another red light. And another oh. one being dished in the 88 car of. Oh, there we go. That's a super stock driver, I think. New to it. Super slow. So Harley Rob having a field day here. There we go. It looks like Kerry Walker's actually managed to get himself off. The red light has come on, so I think he will have to go Winfield according to the SNZ rules. Are they going to go ask the replay? Harley Rob. Yeah, Harley Rob. He's been a menace tonight, but then when isn't he? Um, but here we go. He just lined him up. He's about to line somebody up. Harley Rob. He's just hitting anything he, with, I think, in on the side of it. That could come back to fruition, especially at the South Islands. No, I think he'll be fine. Kerry Walker, I think, might... Ah, oh, is he going to let him stay? We'll just wait and see. He got Here himself he goes. off. Oh. Wait for the Wait for the official call mm. to what's happening. Uh, might have to come off the field, I think, because the red light was caused. We'll wait for the official ruling on that one, of course. Oh, here we so, go. Here's a replay. It went red. Oh, it's about to take someone in the wall. Oh, that'd be the, the 88 one here. Yep. I think he backed out of that one. Here we go. Trying to pick on super, super saloon drivers. And went red, and he realises, yep. uh-oh, I need to back out of that. So, uh, no, just, just a wee tickle up. Yeah. So, Dave Manara, of course, if you ever see the the uh, big ute running around saying, I tow 88, that will be Dave Manara, around here in Berry Fields Drive. I go past his place in Tooten at 9 o'clock just to see if he's woken up in the morning. Rightio, it looks like Kerry Walker's being towed off. We're going to go racing again. So we'll see what the 991's going to pick on this time. Will it be the 88 car? Yep, yep. straight up the date. Going to give oh. our new driver. He's going to find a few drivers trying to... The Nelson boys are going to have a bit of a... Uh, 
support is rarity and sweeting go through i don't think they're going to pick on jack too much what's the 48 he's got the orange flag on here which means please don't hit me i'm only a new boy as sweeting and rarity go to battle rob coming up with the play as well 10 laps for the stock cars here as you watch the 88 of troy cleveland the 48 yeah hardy rob knows better than to hit a guy with the orange flag on as you watch the race lead go through it is jack rarity and Wade Swinney needs to have battled each other at the Nelson track for quite a while. Cleveland sitting uh, in, oh, he'll be sitting down uh -oh. one. He slowed up. So who's Rob looking for this time round? He's on the hunt. Oh, watch out, 59. Here comes the 88 and Baker, so he might be after the 59 car. What's Melissa Giffen? Oh. Melissa Giffen's going to have a go as well, so she's joined Here in go. with the Christchurch guys. Oh. As Rob puts the 88 car with Manoa, puts him up, parks him up. Is he going to be able to get himself off? Not too sure. Probably be another red light. Here we go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. and another one parked up. And it's a 59 Rob going on a destroying match. Red light coming on for the 88 car of Dave Murrow. Welcome to Stock Cars, Dave. Harley Rob, he's just gone into the infield. He's done it again. <sighs> oh, he's just been everywhere well, tonight. I remember many, many years ago, it used to be a one hit oh. wonder. Now he's doing multiple hit wonders. His tyre's gone flat. Oh, yeah, outside flat tyre. Was yeah. Speed on New Zealand brought that back in at the last minute. That's what spoils all the fun. Outside flat tyres here, we could have some more fun. No, we're just going to go and check over the 59 machine and we're going to tow the 88 machine off the wall. Now that does not consult a rollover though because he hasn't gone on his lid. What's quite neat is that you'll find that uh, the 991 will be hit. There we go, chicken flags come out. Uh, yeah. So not a problem replacing that front bumper. I think they've got a few of those at Rob's race cars. There's a flat right rear for the 991. No doubt there'll be some cash handed out at the prize given later on. What well, official results or unofficial results coming through? Tell you that the 416 of Jack Rarity will win that one from a Wade Swinning the 151. Then we go to the 224 of Braden Lawton. The 84 end of Ryan Morrison. They won't hit him because he's a Morrison engine and I don't think <laughs> no. I don't think the engine driver will want to build, beat up the engine builder. If we go back to the oh, good result for the 11 end car of Cam Lancashire. The left him alone. The 48 end of Matt Roller, the new driver. Six spot. Seven spot goes to the Stewart Harley Rob, the 991. Eight spot goes to the 59 of Zach Baker. Man, this is the boy of that one. The 88 end of Dave Manera. Finishes ninth, so that's all good. And the 964C of Melissa Gifford will round up your top ten. 99 Del Ferro, Troy Cleveland was on a destroy mission, Kerry Walker, Max Baker and Brendan Coleman. Hopefully Max isn't too unwell after that one. We'll get him checked up outside. Oh, with that, it is getting on near 11 o'clock, so we're down to the business end of the race meeting. Here's some replays. Here we go, some uh, zero ups. Here goes Harley Rob. Watch him. Here he goes. He's going to uh, line up some people, gets the 59 of oh, Baker, just gives him a uh, spin up Walker. How do we go? Oh, that will bring that that one. He would have got him back for that wee shot. That would have stayed in the memory bank.
won for the Amber Court Motel New Zealand TQ Championship was everything that it proved to be and we thought it was going to be in qualifying. Some stunning races and some of the usual names right at the top step, Gabe. Yeah, absolutely no surprise to see Jeremy Webb up there. It's a bit surprised to see Kane and Barker looking very, very cool as well, as well as one of our Wellington drivers up there on the points as well. 5M Peter Honeybell, we know he's fast. He had issues though after that third heat race. We'll have to wait and see if there's damage to that race car. Yeah, he's already replaced one motor tonight, so hopefully it's not nothing too bad for him. He's always a fast peddler. Finished 3 and Z last time the championship was here. Needing to make the most of his front row start was the 33C of Tyler Warnock. He did that. He took the race win, propelled him up into the top five. Yeah, he was one of the only cars in that last seat was actually sort of trying to pass around the outside, which is key around Nelson, you know, especially when you've got this five heat format, trying to pass cars as much as you can is pretty much the goal, really. 27W, Vaughan Smith was very quick in his third heat race as well. He finishes up in seventh in the points. Yeah, it was very surprised. I've never actually seen him before, but good to see him uh, come up, come down here to Nelson and be seventh on the points after night one. He must be pretty wrapped with himself. And interesting here from eighth place, which is Ryan Baker, down to 14th, which is Royden Crawford. All those drivers are on 33 points. That's how tight it is. Yeah, it's really tight. It'll just depend on what grid draws they have tomorrow. Some of them might have had, you know, your two fronts and a back grid draw. Some of them might have had your 1-1-1. One, one, one. So it'll just depend what they've got tomorrow. But it should be exciting. Racing starts all again at 6 p.m. So just a quick recap on those. 8C Jeremy Webb, four-time national champ. He wants that title back bad. 47 points. 1NZ Aaron Humble, 45 tied with 2NZ of Caden Barker. 5M Peter Honeybell on 38 and 33C Tyler Warnock 37 along with 57C Dylan Forsey and 27W of Vaughan Smith. It's going to be tight, it's going to be hectic, heats 4 and 5 tomorrow, top 18 straight through to the final, reaper charge to get two more but you don't want to be in the reaper charge. No you don't want to be in that reaper charge, you want to make sure you're in that top 18 so you don't have to go through all that dilly dally of trying to make passes around the outside when you don't need to, if you're in that top 18 you're guaranteed to be in that feature. And again, big thanks to Amber Court Motel for sponsoring this New Zealand title fight. We're really looking forward to tomorrow. The sun's going to be shining here again at Nelson Speedway. It's a sign-off from us, mate, and we want you to tune back into the Pits Media tomorrow as well for night number two.